All right, welcome back to Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. So tonight we're actually going to be taking, uh, we're going to be doing a portrait from the egg shape. Uh, we had the video where we talked about how to break down the head using the uh, using the classic egg shape. And in fact, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and be developing this from you know like in the classic egg, which goes back all the way to the Italian Renaissance. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to just really quickly review what we've already learned. So if we, if we watch the skull video, and I think we developed the skull from where we started with the circle and then we came down, which has a basis like the Loomis method. So if we had the, this is our egg shape right here for our skull. For that one, we I said, okay, we're going to drop this down a little bit for the, just below the top. This is the top of the forehead. This is the actual top of the, the, the forehead is in front, and then the head rises up a little bit in the back. So this is the top of the head. This is the top of the forehead. So for the skull, we marked that, and then we went ahead and we took, if we went ahead and put a, center line in here and we'll just have to use our imagination and pretend that's straight but and we'll also I guess we'll have to pretend it's in the middle because I'm looking at this thing and well no it's not as bad as I thought uh, and then we said all right well we're gonna go ahead and divide this into thirds so I am using that middle mark to kind of to gauge this, open this up just a little bit. Okay. So right here we've got pretty close to equal thirds. So when we're dealing with the uh, with the skull, we broke the skull down in using the thirds. And the reason we're going to go over the skull is because obviously, well, she's got a skull under the skin and tissue and muscle and all that good stuff. And there's certain landmarks that are going to become very prominent because of the fact that, you know, she has a skull underneath all that, that material. Um, you know, underneath the skin and the muscle and all that good stuff. So, now the landmarks that we were using for the skull was that this was the top of the forehead, which was where the hairline's gonna be. So that's the hairline, top of the hairline. We're gonna use our imagination and pretend you could read that writing, but Anyway, so this is the top of the hairline right through here, right? Um, I'm sorry, that's just so illegible. I can't let that lie. Okay, so that's the hairline right here. And again, this was from the skull when we did that. This, this line right here is the top of the brow line. So this is, again, where the eyebrow is going to be. Like so. And this right here was the bottom of the nasal cavity. So you had the, again, this, the, the nasal cavity of the nose on the skull. And that's where it hits, was right there. So this is the bottom of the, this right here was the bottom of the nasal cavity. Okay. And then this down here was the, is of course the chin. Right, and if we took the nose to the chin, cut that in half, that's about where the middle of the teeth were. So about right there, right there, is where you'd have the the middle of the teeth, right? Well, where you when once we put flesh and skin on there, we have some different landmarks. Again, this is the nasal cavity. Now, the important thing to understand is that there's flesh hanging down off the nasal cavity. The nasal ca nasal cavity is just a little bit up. Uh, and so that's why with the skin and the muscle, we, we change the landmarks slightly. So if we've got, boy, we really having an issue today with the, with my egg shape. Um, 
puts me nervous for the camera. I usually don't have a problem with doing an egg shape. But if this was, what we did with the, the egg shape is we had different landmarks. We said, okay, this is the, ent the entire um, length of the face, right? And the way we did the, you know, we did the ocular cavities, of course, we, all, we broke all that down for the skull. We're not going to get into that. But this is the basics uh, of, we broke it down to thirds. And using a structural understanding of the skull, the way it's proportioned. And that's the way it was done in the Renaissance. They would actually take this and they would impose it upon the egg shape. The technique that we showed was a little bit, uh, came around, it came around much later. But what we do with this is we take this and we cut this in half. We call the half, half and a half method, right? So this right here, which should be, you know, halfway between here and here, halfway, this is the eye line, okay? And this almost looks like, now this is up a little bit higher. This is, this one here is a little shorter than this one right there. So don't confuse it with this guy over here. I should have made him the same size. But if we broke this up into thirds, the brow would be up here. This would be the third line for the brow. This would be right about there, would be about the top for the hairline, you know, the top of the forehead, the brow. We could take this, you know, to there. And again, make sure, well, it's not high enough, I don't think. That's a little better. Okay, not quite thirds, but, you know, I think you get the, the idea that that should lift a little bit. This should stay about there. <clears throat> So we can impose these different landmarks. Uh, we can merge them together. So la for the for the head, we did half, half, and a half. So we took this distance from the eye line to the nose and cut that in half. Um, and we'll find out by doing this, you'll be like, well, wait a minute. I had my third up here, and this is down here. What's the difference? Well, in remember, this is the nasal cavity. And the nose itself actually has the skin and the septum is below that navel cavity a little bit. So it's important if you're, if you're using Loomis or, or Riley or something like that to be aware of the fact that you're, you're looking at different landmarks. This one's using, this one right here for the nose is actually the underside of the septum right here. Whereas if we actually took the nose off, we would see the nasal cavity just slightly above that. So again, we're using, this is now one half, and this is one half. So this was one half the entire distance. This was then halfway down between the eye line and the chin. And then we take from the nose line, you know, again, this was the nose line over here, and it's the very bottom of the nose, okay? And then we can go ahead and take this to here and cut that in half again. And we said, all right, well, if we cut that in half again, that's the, that's the mouth line. Okay. And again, the mouth line is halfway between, so it's halfway between the nose and the bottom of the chin. So now if we got technical, you'd say, well, that's actually supposed to be one half. That should be one quarter and that should be one eighth. You are correct. But half, half and a half rolls off the tongue a little better. So this is split that in half, take this distance from the eye line down, split that in half, take from the nose to the chin, split that in half. And we've now got the mouth line, the nose line, and this is the chin. Now, when you use this method, there's something very important for you to understand. And the thing you need to understand is that on that mouth line, that this is the bottom lip. So the entire mouth, what we think of as the mouth, is above that line. Okay, so we're just put a, a basic, this represents a mouth. It's a hideous mouth, but we'll just go ahead and say, yeah, it's a mouth for what our purposes. But the mouth is a you know rest the bottom of the lip rests on that mouth line it's above it 
do not put like the that if you put the middle of the mouth here they're going to have no chin so understand that that little caveat that that we start to have room for a space between the lips and the little ellipse for the chin and that's the basic idea and again we can add the extra landmarks for oh the just about the top of the head drop down now this actually should, if we got technical uh, this right here, this little distance is less than one eighth of the entire distance. I think it's closer to one tenth. Um, but usually you'll just go, ah, that's pretty close. We'll just mark it. Uh, and then you divide into thirds. And what you get is you would also get, okay, well, if I, div if I take the skull proportions and I put them on top of the basic egg shape, because the egg is just halfway, it's first to split in half of the eye line, take from the eye line to the chin, split that in half. Take from the nose to the chin, split that in half, and you got your half, half, and a half, which gives you eye line, nose line, and mouth line, and then the bottom, of course, of this is the chin, right? And that's how we do it from the egg shape. But if we take this and we divide this into thirds, we get, oh, well, not only that, but I've got the brow line. Okay. And I would also get... Um, you know, we well, we have the hairline, we have the brow line, the nose. We don't really worry about as much, uh, unless you start going into perspective. In which case, uh, this third is actually the ball of the nose, not the bottom of the nose. And when you start tilting backwards and forwards, that becomes far more important with perspective. Not a big deal today. So the biggest thing we're going to get out of this is the brow, by bringing these thirds over. Okay, and then what we did from there is we said, all right, we're just going to take this. Remember that we did this in eye spaces? Uh, these were different because this is the full ocular cavity, but since we're doing it with flesh, uh, you know, a, a head, not a skull, we're gonna actually gonna take this and we're gonna divide this into five eye spaces. Now we used a uh, line divides a line. Um, That's close, but no cigar. But I, well, last time we used line divides a line, which is a lot, just works a whole lot better. But we divided this into five. Yeah, that's too wide. Bring that in either side. That would then be, okay, fine. So that's one, two, three. So we went ahead and Uh, split this into five. Maybe I'll just make them bigger because I thought I had my eraser here, but apparently not. So we had our five eye spaces. Okay, so we went from there and, and again, now you have the on the eye line, you know, that this is usually going to be, again, usually through the center-esque part of the eye. And then you have where to put the eyebrow. So you, again, you, you've got some landmarks here. Uh, that we can that we could then develop this into a head and we did that already We're now going to take this and actually do an actual person because the important thing is is a head is malleable In other words, this could be a longer face. So this would stretch taller than it is wide It could be a very round face so it could it could stretch this way and be a little wider you know in terms of its width to height ratio uh, some people will have again these three eye spaces, you know, actually I shouldn't do that. That's one, this is two, three, four, five. Remember that one and five can vary. So, but these three, these three right here, the, the, uh, these three eye spaces are always going to be the same. If you're doing a realistic head, they're going to be pretty much the same distance. Uh, if you're stylizing something for cartoons or if you're stylizing something for anime, uh, well then that's, you know, that's something else entirely. But for a realistic portrait, these three spaces should be the same. And these on the outside can vary sometimes. Now it's usually more than a half. You wouldn't have a half eye space unless you have hair gathering around the head like what's happening here, in which you can't, in which, in which case you can't see past the hair. And so... Um, but most people is either going to be a full to a three quarters of an eye space, depending on their age, depending on their head shape, depending on a lot of factors. So we're going to go ahead and use this, but we're going to temper it with the basic proportions of this person. 
So we're going to measure for thirds. So we're going to measure from the chin to the nose and from the nose to the brow and from the brow to the hairline. And just by doing that really quickly, I already know that her hairline is actually a little shorter. Um, it might be that I actually shot her a little bit from below because now this isn't a great picture. I apologize, but we can see just a little bit of the underside of her chin, which means it was probably shot a little bit lower. And that explains why we're seeing a little bit of the underside of the nose. This distance has extended a little bit because it's been shot from a lower eye line, eye level. We're now talking perspective, which means where is your, where are your eyes in relation to the person? And so, um, that's always in play. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to lay this out. Um, there's some other things that we're going to really, we're going to measure all the eye space. We're going to take our eye and measure the distance between and then, and then measure either side. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to do some of that. We're also going to measure, remember, you know, we said, all right, from the, from about the middle of the eye, it should be about halfway down. And my goodness, again, we're, we're getting some, uh, the, 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 uh, perspective is distorting this a little bit, but look how, how much longer the, the width is on from the nose to the jaw. It's not that perfect half. It's, it's wider. Okay. So that's something that's going to make this feel like her. Uh, and so we're going to, we're going to think of some other, some, some things that we're going to relate to. And, and the first thing we're going to check is the thirds for the brow or from the chin to the nose, the nose, to the brow and the nose to the, the hairline to see if those have opened up. We're also going to check, well, let's see if the, if through the middle of the eyes halfway, and if we took that and took that, it's not. Okay. So so it's not, so we want to go ahead and move a little bit backwards and forwards. Uh, so we're going to check the distances, you know, is this bottom lip halfway between the nose to the chin? If it's not, we're going to, we're going to change it slightly because again, these are malleable. Now this doesn't mean there's going to be huge swings. If it's too big of a swing, it won't look like the person, but no person falls exactly within these thirds and fifths and halves and fourths and, or whatever. So we're going to do a little bit of measuring to get her basic proportions on what is the general generic mannequin view of a person. This is just a mannequin again. No one's eyes are exactly halfway on their head. And also remember that we're taking into account hair. Hair grows out from the head, which means the hair is going to change things a bit. So we're going to try to again, try to bring all this information to bear and we're going to draw her. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and get a clean piece of paper. So we'll just take this off. This again was just to show us the difference between the the half, half and a half, which is to the eye line. Okay. So we had half, half and a half. This is halfway to the eye line. Eye line to the nose is halfway between the eye and the chin. And the mouth is halfway between the nose and the chin halfway line versus the skull, which was thirds. Mark the, mark the hairline, break it up into thirds and then go from there. All right, so we're going to come back and we're going to start drawing this person. So I've got a clean piece of paper. Uh, took down some quick, a little to position, the, you know, what I'm drawing. I made some, some marks to help me position where, where the, where this is and such. Um, So I, I wanted to first put down a center line while we're drawing this. So I went ahead and established a center line. Now on the egg shape, I had some people watching and they were saying, Hey, your drawing was kind of light. And most people are checking the video out for a couple minutes and leaving. And a lot of these videos are going to be about 60 minutes or longer. And so things start off as a sketch stage. So they're going to be very light and then they get darker as I get uh, more confidence because we're going to move stuff around as we start, as we start to check proportions. Let's 
try that again. Okay, so here what I've done is we've got a clean piece of paper. I went ahead and I've established the center line. Now I've had some of the classes or, or some of the videos where people have tuned in for a couple minutes and tuned out. And they're like, hey, the, the drawing's really light. Couldn't hardly see anything. And that's because we're going to start off in the sketch stage. You always, stage, you always start out light whenever you start to draw. And that's what I'm going to do here. So the drawing is this, the video is going to be about an hour. Uh, it it maybe a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit longer. But we're going to first make marks and we're going to continue to move the marks until they're more in line with what we're seeing. And so we're going to use the basic idea of the head, but first we're going to start out with the basic proportions. And so I went ahead and measured. Now we can't see the ears because she's got hair and it's draping in front of it. But the widest part is actually these cheekbones. And so if we, and that's the same thing on the skull, the widest part of the skull is the cheekbones. So if we go ahead and measure the cheekbones and then we measure how far it is up the skull, pardon me, or up the head, uh, we, we came, I came, I found out that it's about one and a half times this distance is one and then a half to about the top of that skull. And so again, if we said, all right, well, what's, if we took this distance here and we said, okay, that's one. And then that's, you know, a half. And I think I went a little bit too far. So let's double check what we got here. Cause that didn't seem to, to pan out. Um, so in other words, we could say, we said, all right, well, this, and let's, if I need to, I could get out a piece of paper and I go, okay, well, this right here is, you know, that one measurement, right? Which goes to there. And if we took this and divide this in half and we could fold this over. Now this is a piece of watercolor paper, so it won't fold over like a piece of, you know, printer paper or something like that. So it looks like my first mark might have been closer. So if we took this, which is about halfway, and we said again, okay, what's the full distance? That's one. And I said, well, that's a half. And so we could take, oh, what's that? It's right there. And then we'll take this right here. And that's, so this is one and a half times. And again, we could double check this by going, okay, let's, let's measure the, the cheekbones. Uh, so, and, I, and to make sure that I don't get lost, I can put like a little notation. That's a little triangle to say, hey, this is my new measurement. So I don't get distracted by those old marks. And I said, all right, if you put this down here with the chin, well, the first one goes right about to the brow. And then if we cut this in, if we cut this in half, yeah, so it's already going to be right about there. I just realized when I was first measuring this, oh, it's too long. Then I, so, so I kind of try to compensate for it to see if this would be where it is. And that's, that's it. That's the halfway point. So I'm going to mark that with a triangle. And then we can come up here to the brow and bring this up. And that's again, just about where the top of the skull is. The hair is a little bit above that. Uh, so again, we, do, we went ahead and said, all right, what was that? This is the old one. And we could go ahead and double check it. And again, it's, it's about three times as, uh, not three times, one and a half times. Now I actually have a, a center line, which split this in half, which means it should be three of those. And I go, let's say that's one, that's two. And that's again, that's about three. So this right here is three times, or pardon me, not three times, but one and a half times as tall as it is wide. Remember I split that in half. And so I used three of those because this is, one and a half, uh, pardon me, this is my width. This goes into that one and a half times. Or I could say, well, if I took this and cut that in half, well, then it would divide in three times because this is 1.5 essentially. But we're not going to get into the math of it. But how this is basically this distance here and this bottom of the chin here and this distance to the cheekbones. This width is one and a half times, it's one and a half times as tall as it is wide. So we've taken this distance here. And again, we've taken that distance and one and a half times, and this is now the height to width ratio uh, of this person's head. And again, it's falling right about here. And so the hair is going to be just a little bit above that. Um, so what I'm going to do now, this is.
This is a little bit larger than, than uh, this is almost a little larger than life size. You got to be careful when you're larger than life size. It can look weird. And the reason why is because people, the proportions start to really look off if you get them off. And that's what happens a lot of times. People will tell you not to draw larger than life size to avoid it. And it's basically because they, they don't know how to deal with, with the proportions. Uh, because a little bit, you know, goes a long way when, when you start, you know, uh, distorting the proportion. So I'm going to drop this down because again, this, this, this point was landing to about the top of the skull, not the top of the hair. And so if this right here was the top of the skull, that right there, uh, there's hair above it. And then we have the hairline. And so I was going to mark the hairline first. Okay. And uh, the next thing that we can do, we say, all right, this is the top where the hair is. This is the hairline. And I'm going to check where the halfway point is. So if I went to the tear duct and then I came from the tear duct up, and maybe I could clarify that by again using a piece of paper. If I went ahead and say, right, here's, here's the bottom of the chin. And this right here is the tear duct straight over. What is, is that the halfway point? And it's close, but not quite. And so that's important for me to know. It's not exactly the halfway point. It's actually, this is a little bit from here to here is a little taller than from there to the top of the head. Now, remember part of this is because of perspective. I, I mentioned before that this has been shot with a lower eye line. So the eye line is about here. So that means there's some foreshortening as this goes up. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to match the head and then go, okay, there's hair above the head to here. And then we're going to basically split this in half. Now I could do this all kinds of different ways. I could guesstimate and sit there and play with my mark and go, well, let's see, is that, you know, is that about half, is that about halfway? It's not. Uh, but here's a, here's a quick way of doing it. I could say, look, okay, if this is the bottom of the chin, this was my guess at halfway is right here. I was guessing it to be there. Um, I'm also going to track this one because I got another, another little mark on here. So I'm going to make a little, little arrow so that I know that that's the one I'm using. And then I'm going to go to the halfway mark and I'm going to mark that with that in an arrow. Okay, then I'm going to come from here up to the top. Now, again, it was close, but how far off am I? Now, I'm not off by much. And so. Well, let's say I was off like by a quarter of an inch. Well, here what you do, and, and I can do the same thing here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up so this is half, the, so that this marks from there and that increment down to, to there. And so this is how far I was off, is this little, little distance in between, that this distance here was how far off I was. I was close. And all I do is I split the difference because that means I was equally off by just a little bit. And now I've got, so, Again, all I do is I took, well, that's how much I guessed it to be. And then I started here with that's how much I guessed it to be. I marked where that hit because it wasn't quite the halfway point. So I had a mark down here and a mark down there and I split them, split them in half to get the exact middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And I want this as a beginning reference point. Because remember that this is not the tear duct because the tear ducts are actually a little bit taller. And so again, if we, let's see, which one of these did I actually mark that? It was this one. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put two on here to understand that these are different, a different set of, of measurements. So I don't wanna, this only has one triangle, these have two triangles. Uh, and so if I went from the chin up to the tear duct and went from the tear duct up, we can see that it's that again that this to here is longer than than to there. This you know what I mean, and so and it's about a quarter of an inch. Now, if this was the exact same size, we can go oh we'll just lift that by a quarter of an inch, because of the fact that this is a little bit bigger, we're going to have to come up just a little bit more than a quarter. This is almost um, five sixteenths. But I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, well, this right here will now be where those eyes are, where the, this will be where the tear duct is, because the tear duct isn't exactly in the middle, it's up a little bit more. And again, part of it is because of the perspective, okay? 
Um, we can even go ahead and start to go, well, let's see, let's, let's use the, the forehead mark. Cause we said, this was the skull. This was the top of the forehead just about cause there's hair down to the hairline. This is the top of the skull. The hairline and the top of the skull is not the same. The hairline is down a little bit. So again, if I'm guesstimating that this was the top of the skull, we could take from here to here and divide it into thirds. Now, again, if we took this and, and we, we measure the thirds, we could ask ourselves, Hey, you know, are there equal thirds and they're not. Um, but let's go ahead and stick to the, let's, let's, let's do the egg one first and then we'll bring the skull back onto it. So this right here is going to be my eye line. Her eye line was just above the halfway point, not, not a ton, a little bit more than it would be normally because of perspective. Again, there's some perspective going on. That means things foreshortened slightly and it changes things. So this here will be my eye line. Let's go ahead and check to see if the nose is halfway from the eye line down to the chin. Now there is some perspective, so I'd be shocked if it was. But if I took and measured this to that eye line, and then I came down here from the chin and measured it up, it's not, it's almost, again, part of this is because of perspective. So again, if I said, all right, well, this is, if, if this right here was about halfway, I don't know that it is, we could check it by either using our piece of paper, which is very accurate, or I could use my pencil and my thumb, mark, put my thumb on, on where it starts and put the end of the pencil where it's supposed to be and check to see, nope, I was, I was off by a country mile. Um, so as some people used to say back in the day. Um, so again, this right here is the halfway point and the halfway point again on the, with no perspective, looking straight on, that should be about where the nose is. That is not where her nose is. And so if we took, and again, we can see the underside of her nose. That's because again, because of the fact that we're on the underside. So I'm measuring not from the septum, which, which is up here. You know, this right here is the septum. We're going to measure down here where the, where the, the uh, wings of the nose are connecting. And I'm also trying to, I've got a weird sheen on this because this is a photo paper that I, that I printed off onto and the halfway point is a, is above the brow. Um, in fact, it's about a third of the way, almost up the brow. That's a considerable, uh, considerable difference. Even with perspective happening, uh, she's got a much, she's got, she's got a longer, uh, you know, distance between her nose and her chin. She's got a shorter nose essentially. And so if we're going to do this instead, if we said, well, where's the halfway point? Let's say we, then this is called the, this right here, this little tie shape that's below the nose, that's called the philtrum. We're going to look for the halfway point of the philtrum, see if that's where our halfway point is. So we're going to go ahead and, and put this here, to the philtrum, bring that up. Man, that's not even the halfway point. Let's check the top of the lip, top of the lip. Oh my goodness. It's the top of the lip. So if we wanted to, we could double check this, that this would be again, the bottom of the chin. This would be the bottom of the lip, bring that up. Well, this is a lot more, well, you know, so, um, boy, I don't know what I was thinking. No, it was the top of the lip, wasn't it? So bring this to the top of the lip, not the bottom. It wasn't even, yeah, it's, it's the halfway point is the top of her lip. Wow. So this right here is the halfway point. This is no longer the nose. This is now the top of the lip. Now, again, this is this, this view again has that perspective. And so this is really distorting it. And so even though it's a front view, understand that not all front views are the same. There's all kind of, and in this case, we're, we're dealing with perspective and foreshortening, uh, because the camera, instead of being up right here, it's lower. And so we're seeing the underside of stuff and things are foreshortening up at the top. Um, we've got a perspective issue. And so, and remember when we're talking about perspective, it's always in play. This it's in, in play in a major, major way. So if this is the halfway point is the top of her lip. 
if I took this to again where her where her nose touches and again maybe because it's a little bit hard to see with my thumb in the way if we mark the top of the lip and we mark the base of the nose how far does that go uh, and that's where the wing is touching right there we're gonna go okay that's one two three It's almost a fourth of the way. Okay, so that, that's pretty incredible. So this is again the tear duct, uh, was where they were for the eye line, but the eye line passes through the tear duct, keep that in mind. For this person, that's what we're using. If, if we're using, you know, the middle of the eye, that's fine, but that's not what we're using. Um, I've already got a mark here. I can't remember why that mark is there, but it looks like it's almost one quarter. So let's check that out. One, two, three, Nope, that's more than a quarter. Let's bring that back down just a scotch. And now we're going to go ahead and go, let's see, that's one, two, three, four. That's a, so let's, let's just double check that. Let's make sure that it's nice and clean. And again, if I really want to be clear, let's try, let's try this. So that's one, because sometimes the thumb is going to muddy the water. It's great for sketching, but let's say we want to be much more clear. Well, then we can go ahead and grab this piece of paper. Uh, we're off still uh, So we're going to split the difference between this This was my original line. There was too much. This was that that was too short So we're gonna go ahead and go okay, and it's not I didn't lift it much It's it's been lifted by less than the 16th. It's about a 32nd of an inch But if we go there that then lifts this here that then lifts this here That then lifts that there and we're right at one quarter. So again, I split you sp can split the difference a lot so this is about where the bottom of the nose is. Now this is not, when I say the bottom of the nose, we're not even talking here. We're actually seeing a little bit of the curvature of her muzzle. Everybody has a muzzle. Remember that the, the tooth cylinder is what they call that. And that's basically the muzzle that we have a projection of the mouth this way and a projection of the mouth curving out this way. Um, sometimes it can, it can uh, people get a little like, wait a minute, we're talking about people here. You're throwing out muzzles there. It makes them sound like, uh, we're talking about schnauzers or something, and, and it's just the fact that all mammalian species have a muzzle of some sort. Ours is very small, but we've got one. Whereas something like a horse has a very extended muzzle. Right? So, and that just means that there's, you know, the teeth wrap or project from the skull in a certain way. That's what creates that muzzle. Um... So anyways, this is now, this is going to be the, now again, remember what's so wild is this is the halfway point and her nose doesn't come down that far. Her nose comes a quarter of this distance here, one quarter of this distance, which is, this is the tear duct. That's where the bottom of her nose is. It's crazy. That's, that's very unusual, but it's not because of perspective. It would be, except for the fact we're dealing with perspective, and perspective distorts. Uh, this little arc here is to give the little arc as it comes underneath the nose. So I, I'm, I'm just reminding myself that, hey, the nose is going to lift a little bit more as it wraps around the, the arc of the tooth cylinder, or in other words, the muzzle. So this is still the chin. This is then the top of the lip. Now, where's the bottom of the lip? Now, again, her chin is extending because of the fact of perspective. But if we went ahead and measured... From the bottom of the lip, the bottom of the lip up, it's just a little bit more than one third. It's, so if we go, hey, what, bottom of the mouth should be the halfway point. No, it's not. It's actually going to be about one third of this distance between the chin and there is going to be that you know how big the lip is. Uh, you know, so we're going to go ahead and measure this. This is a little more than halfway, which is going to put us right about there. So we can measure that to there. Oh, that's pretty close. But again, if we took this, again, if we wanted to be really, really clean and clear, so you can see what I'm talking about. If I went ahead and marked off, again, the bottom of this lip and the bottom of the chin, and we brought this up, well, it's not quite halfway. It's not a third either, so it's gonna be probably talking about fifths if we got technical. But if we split this in half, which I think was right there, okay, 
this is the top of that lip. Now I think I said what I say, that was to there, which is the chin to the bottom of the lip. From the bottom of the lip, it's above the top of the lip just a little bit. Okay, so uh, it means it's a little more extended. So if we took this, that's half, and if we lift it just a tiny bit, we're going to get about that same relationship. It went ahead, it was about one, then two, and not quite three. Uh, so again, if we took this, it would be, again, one, two, and, you know, not quite three. So again, we're going to go ahead and, now again, if we took this to here, this was almost the same distance as that to the, to the mouth. So I can check that. Well, let's go ahead and I'll still use this one mark I just had. That's the chin. This is the top of the mouth. And again, if we, if, if we did that original, those original marks, um, this right here is coming up too far. So we need to come down a little bit more. So let's do this again. Let's go ahead and mark that to there. That's just under half. Let's try that. That must have been the mark I wanted because that looks like that's going to be right. So this is point towards the one I'm using, which is this one. Point towards that one that I'm using because I'm getting lost. And then we'll go ahead and do this. Now this is just above there. Uh, so this will be, this is the, that's the bottom of the lip. So I was trying to get just the exact, and again, the re, what I was trying to do was I was trying to find that this distance here comes just barely above the top of the lip, and it does, right about there. Uh, and so that's what we're looking for. So this is going to be the bottom of the mouth. So you might be like, well, wait a minute, what happened to that very simple half, half and a half? Well, the half, half and a half is just a guide. Because again, we have perspective that's changed. We have, you know, the, her own characteristics to her face that changes uh, things. And so it really is just a guide. So we're trying to take that idea and we're looking for the landmarks. This wasn't quite half, but it's close. It's above it. The really wild part was through through the chin and the and the nose. And the reason why is because if we have perspective, this stretches the most. This next third stretches a little less, and the top third stretches the least. So we're going to continue getting our, again, this is to the cheekbones, right? We've now got to the lip. We've got the basic vertical alignments. We still want the brow. And so um, we're going to go ahead and check what the brow distance is. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So we're going to, we're going to, um, we're going to try to mark the brow. So I'm going to take the distance from here to the brow and I'm going to say, hey, how much is that for the, the remaining part? And it's almost one fourth to the skull. And so, which again, this, that's the skull. So we could go ahead and take this and divide this in half. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use this one again. We're going to mark the skull. We're going to mark the eye line. I'm going to mark it with a couple of triangle so I know where I'm at. And then I marked the halfway point, which I think was right there. So that's our halfway point. Or I'm going to check it. So this right here is supposed to be half. So I'm going to lift this up, move that to there. And this is now that increment where it hits. So again, I've got a discrepancy. I, first I took this increment. I said, well, that's trying to try and be halfway. So I lined up that increment with the skull, which was right here, and it went to a little mark right there. That's the space between there is the discrepancy. It's not a big discrepancy, but it's a discrepancy. And so I just split the difference, and that should be the true halfway point. So we can use this to just very, very when we get used to doing that to very quickly. Now I could do this, you know, again by eye, by eyeballing stuff, and uh, you know, just double. I can double check my work. If I was really, you know, really worried about this, I could use armature of a rectangle to uh, to, to check it that way. Um, so this should be the uh, the brown. Now the way to find out if I got it right. So we're, again, we're going to check all kinds of measurements. We're going to go from the brown. Now the not the eyebrow. The brow starts 
the nose comes up onto what's called the brow, which is right here, which is almost this place right here where the eyebrow line is, and then it arcs up. The eyebrow's arcing up. So if I took from that point right there to the top of the, to the top of the head, I said, okay, if that's my measurement, what's that from the, the brow down to the nose? And they're about the same. So I could check to say, hey, if I want to see if the brow's in the right place, I'm going to measure from this. This is the skull up here. Okay. So I'm going to measure from the skull down to the brow and then from the brow down to the nose. Now it's not the same. So that means that something's off. So again, if I measured from here onto the brow and then on the brow up to Oh, this isn't the same. What did I just do? I messed something up because I just checked that and that's not the same. So there's another, there's an old saying in carpentry. My dad was a cabinet maker and that is, you know, measure twice, cut once. And so I went ahead and I got up here. It's close, but it's, it's, it's not the exact same. So again, if we took this to that brow, this should then be just about the same and it's not which means this is too long, which means this is too high. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to measure this again. I'm going to go ahead and go, okay, this is that to there. Okay. And then this should go above. The hairline just a bit. Wait, where did that go? This to here, that to there. Let's try this again because it goes above the hairline, just okay. So I'm gonna split the difference. Once again, I split the difference all the time because I know this is too much, this is too short, and we'll just go ahead and split the difference. So now I've got the brow line. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could say, well, what's, you know, what's the distance between here to the top of the hairline? What's that from the chin up, you know, and I could, you know, you could start checking all these little distances. Just trying to straighten out this line. Um, just a bit. Okay. All right, we've got some of the most important stuff here, really. We've got, because now we've got, we've got the brow line um, now, you guys might be doing this, uh, for those of my class, you're going to be working in graphite. I'm working in charcoal just because it shows up better on camera. And sometimes you'll see me wipe something or you'll see me use the back of my hand to like brush away the charcoal. You never ever do that in graphite. It will dirty up your drawing very quickly. And graphite is very different from charcoal. Charcoal you can get away with stuff you cannot get away with with graphite. If you try to do it in graphite, your drawing will look awful. It will pay the price. And we don't, you know, we want it to, to look good. So uh, charcoal is a little bit more malleable. It can, you can wipe in stuff like that. You can, you can blend a little bit more, be a little more heavy handed with it. And uh, I'm really just doing it because I'm trying to save time. So I'm not picking up an eraser every time. But if this was a graphite drawing, forget it. I'd be grabbing an eraser each and every time because you don't want to smear graphite. The moment you start smearing graphite around, your drawing will always look dirty. It will never look as clean. So you want to be careful about that. Okay. So what have we marked here? This is the brow line. Uh, I marked this up here, but we didn't, we haven't really, I haven't, I haven't labeled it. That's the hairline. And that's the skull, okay? And this is the width of the cheeks, okay? So we're actually gonna to start to rough in the head because we have some very basic uh, measurements. The, the last thing we're gonna look at is right at, where does, where does the, where does the, does it start to come over for the, for the jaw? And it really is coming almost, um, this is the top lip right here. Uh, this is the bottom lip right here. So this is the, uh, we'll just put uh, B 
B lip for bottom of the lip. And then this is the chin. Okay, so that's the chin. Um, if we went ahead and split this in half, that's about where the where where it starts to change direction for the jaw. Actually, it's a little higher than that, isn't it? So we'll come over here. Make this just a little bit higher. Okay. Now we're also going to be dealing with symmetry. This is a uh, a front view. We're going to move very much more quickly from here on out because this is the biggest stuff that we wanted to. First, we're going to have to rough in the face. We can see that there's a slight angle coming down from the cheekbones. Okay, and then it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna break and come in towards the chin. Now, if I was smart, and let's hope I am going to be smart, if I look at the chin, there's a very distinct, you know, oval shape, not oval, pardon me, elliptical shape, not an oval, because it's supposed to be symmetrical. Eggs are not symmetrical, ellipses are. For those that, you know, have had the class, you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, so we want this to be a nice ellipse. And the ellipse should be equal distant off the center line because it should be symmetrical, right? So again, we're going to go ahead and just put it. Now, that I'm going to, this is just a basic uh, sort of idea of, of what the, now I'm going to measure off the center line. We're going to do some mirroring technique. Uh, for those that don't know mirroring technique, you can check out some of my other, uh, some of my other videos where we start talking about how can I mirror stuff from the right side to the left side. When you're working with symmetry, you're always dealing with the right versus the left for symmetry. And so we use things like mirroring technique and others to help us with certain ideas. This is going to be, um, again, just the basic rough end of this head get the basic angle over here on you know because the cheek it widens the cheek and then it comes down at an angle from the cheek to the to the jaw now she's got a little bit more angularity to her uh to her face uh, let's just double check it off my center line that my cheekbones are indeed the same distance uh, it looks like I got off. I, it got off a little bit. Hold on a second. This is the center line. Pardon me, that's not the center line. This is the outside edge. That's the center line. And let's just double check. Indeed, it's it's just a scotch off. Um, I think that'll be small enough. Of a, it's not going to make a big, a big problem. Um, so this will come down here, and then this is going to transition into the chin. It also gets thinner as it comes up onto the forehead. So again, we're just gonna we're trying to get this uh, this basic shape of the face um, This is then gonna come up here onto the onto the forehead. Okay. So this is the basic uh, face shape that we're going to deal with. And again, we can't see the ears and part of the face because of the hair cascading down the face. Now, I'm going to ask for those in my class to uh, use a picture of, of anyone you, that, that you've got that you'd like to draw. This is actually not a great photograph. Uh, it'll work for, the, for this demo, but it, again, it's not a great photograph. Uh, and so, you know, draw someone, you know, you know, or you love or family or what have you. Uh, it, you, you know, usually if you care about something more, you'll do a better job on it. Um, so again, we've got just the basic head shape right now. And then we're going to go ahead and start to put in some of the other stuff. Now, before we go any further... We're going to um, we're going to start on the eyes, okay? All right, so we're going to come back here, and we can see the outside of the ocular cavities are just in from where this hair is draping. Um, this one, it's almost following right on, so that's going to be in a little bit as well, uh, which means it's going to be covering just a little bit more of that cheekbone. Um, 
But if this is the outside of the ocular cavity, and again, that means that we've got part of the head that we can't see that's over here. But we're going to go ahead and take the ocular cavity. So there's, there's a little trick. So again, we, instead of dividing it in five, we can't see all five. There's a lot of hair here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do like we, with the skull, we look for the outside of that ocular cavity where the, you know, and we can see it pretty, you know, it's very prominent. And so I'm going to mark this and go, that's the, this is the, uh, Again, the ocular cavity where it starts. And this is another way of doing this. Uh, so for those that, that, that haven't that have been in the class, I know we did a little bit differently last week. We divided everything into fifths. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to come over here and we're going to say, okay, and if this is the ocular cavity, the, the eye starts in just a little bit from there. And so I'm going to guesstimate, you know, I'm going to look at that and go, well, the eye is coming in just a little bit from there. And so we're going to say this is where the eye starts or starts and stops. Okay. And then what we're going to do with that is if this is where the edge of the eye is, now we just have to divide this into three because we can't see eye space one and five. Okay. So we want to go ahead and make sure, and let's just make sure we've got symmetry here once again. Uh, we've got to make sure that we've got, again, the, the, uh, the symmetry part of this going on. Um, this, I think, is might be in just a little too far. So I'm double-checking the distance off the center line. So whenever we're using symmetry, we're still using that center line. Certain line really will help you as you draw. So this just want to make sure that big thick line, this is actually the same distance on both sides right there. And now again, it still looks weird. Hold on a second. Let me just check this once more. Remember measure twice, cut once, that whole thing. This is still off just a bit. This one should be actually right over there. And I think we're, then we'll be fine. Um, so we're going to divide this into three. Now again, I could guesstimate this because if this is the halfway point, we know that the thirds are, 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 you know, are just kind of close to the halfway point, but not exact. I could certainly do this and I could say, well, is that equal? And they're not. I'd have to open it up to about here. So if I open it to there, and then I, that's actually equal on both sides, but is this the same as that. It's pretty dang close. Um, so we're going to go ahead and leave that. That this right here is now a third. Now I guesstimated that. What are other ways of doing it? Well, again, I could, whoops, I brought that dot in a little bit. The dot should be here. I could take armature of the rectangle, make this into a little visor, take the diagonals, find the, the, the halfway points, use the diagonals to divide it using armature of a rectangle. And I could certainly do that. And if you're doing something really huge, like let's say I was doing a face three times the size, well then I could use that to double check, um, double check my, uh, that I'm actually getting pretty close to doing actual thirds. And it's very, very accurate. Now if I wanted to, I could take this eye space over here and go, hey, how many eye spaces from this up, you know, so I could say, well, it was about two eye spaces to the top of the hairline. So we go, well, there's one, and then there's two. And again, we could just double check things with eye spaces, because if any of the if any of these proportions get off, even in the least, you know, the littlest, most minute way, they're going to make a big difference in whether this looks like this person. So again, if I could take the eyes, the eye here, and I could go, well, let's see, coming up from here, that's one. And then coming up from there, that's two. And that's right about where the forehead is. And then we can see, well, how many eye spaces down from here down? And we say, let's see, well, that's one to the nose. And then there's one to the bottom of the lip. And so, I mean, we can double check that. So again, I could go, well, this is my eye space. So this is the last thing is that the head is measured in eye spaces, and that this is the last way to double check to see if we've got, uh, you know, I might go, hey, this this somewhere between there 
is the forehead and maybe I'll just I'll just split the difference um, for that that seems like a little bit of a discrepancy if I come down here with this eye space and we go here this should be about now did I go let's see did I take this over here and come down to there yeah whoops hit my little easel here sorry about that so if we take this and come down this should be about one eye space so again I can modify this even more you know to double check and so again I could say wow that's so this right here is again an eye space and again just so I don't get too distracted or too far off I can take this and mark this three times But again, now this seems like, wow, you're really getting, aren't you going a little nuts on this? And uh, I just want you to understand that, do you do this each and every time? No. What this is to, to, trying to get you to do is it's trying to get you to develop a better eye. So you can, I'm sitting here in the, that you get, a, you're, you're getting a better eye so you can understand how, how the proportions work. And so. I'm trying to make sure, absolutely sure that that it was okay. So it is a little bit more. Um, and so again, I just said, all right. Well, this was about one eye, one eye space down, which was here, but it's actually a little bit more. So that was there. I was thinking it was here. That'll probably be fine. I think we'll be in line. I think we'll be close enough. So, um, so I just want again. I, I could take. In fact, some people, I had one teacher that he starts you with one eye and then you got, you had to measure the rest of the head out with one eye space or one eye space because the eyes, you know, are a key way to measure. So again, I could measure this between the eye spaces, take that from the chin up. That's just below that eye space. So I could take this distance here, come from the chin up. Um, and if it's, if it's different, in fact, that, I better double check that because that was a little different. If we went ahead and measured from there all the way over to here. I'm going to put like a little, a little star next to that guy. So that's the actual distance of the eyes. And then I came over here from the chin and brought this up. Okay, good. That's about halfway up the nose. So again, if we said that's the halfway point. So again, I could just double check. These are pretty close. That is, that's the exact same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put two diamonds there and two diamonds below there. So that's the distance between of two eyes. And if we've done this right, that should come right about halfway up the nose um, and it's not holy smokes what does that mean well what that means is is that um, now we're, let's just double check this first one again we did that oh I used one twice didn't I <laughs> all right fine but I can see it so this is my space and I came over here and I said well let's see we're gonna put that here at the chin Come up the nose. Yeah, it's about halfway up the nose. Come up here. There's that distance here. Put that distance there to that distance there. That means we've got a little bit more chin. Once we stretch that, that's going to affect a little bit of the mouth. If we add this much chin, you know, that this is now this right here, and that's, if that's the halfway point. Uh, and I could double check that very quickly. We're getting a little bit too ser uh, serious with this, but if I'm doing formal portraiture, you're gonna you're you're gonna want to do this. If if you're doing caricature, it doesn't matter because now all of a sudden you're still looking at proportions, but you're distorting them, you're stretching them, you're trying to look for their anapomorphic. Uh, I believe I believe if I'm using that term right, it's been a long time since we did that. But you know, if people remind you of certain animals. Um, you know, do they have a cat-like face? Do they have a, a face that looks like, you know, something, you know, like an alligator or something, you know, something a little more, something, something like that. Um, well, then you can start playing, 
you know, the whole idea of uh, caricature where you're, you're distorting that even more. And so we're trying to see, hey, uh, if, if this is Um, the other idea is, is that if this is, if we start, she's got really big eyes, um, and uh, on, on her, she's got really, really wide open, really big eyes. I'm trying to, I can't imagine I got this far off, but we're going to have to go with this. Once I lock that in, it's locked, and so now... Uh, uh, you know, I was trying to get to. Usually, I don't have this much of a discrepancy when we're dealing with uh, when we're dealing with portraits. Uh, this is a little bit bigger than life size, so you will. Uh, and this is part. Of, look how far that chin was off. That's three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm going to bring this down. Now, remember, this is the underside of the chin. That's the top side of the chin. If we stretch that that far. Things have got to change with this nose, because um, again, if we're if we're uh, what do we do this? We we did this. This came down to here, but okay, it was just just above it. Okay, I think we're gonna leave that in. Uh, if we took so we moved this just a little bit, so this can probably uh, change. But this right here is going to be affected substantially. If we if we drop this down this much, that means there's some. It's gonna it's it's gonna have to really change what's going on on, on this on the on this face from the the chin up. So from here, one eye space is is a little bit above the bottom lip. That's in line. That's a little bit. So everything's going to have to shift as it comes down because of the fact that we moved this so far. You know, if we took this distance and took this distance there, this distance, this distance here with the again with the the hair. Okay, something's off. Yeah, something's off. I need to. I need to check something because there's a three eye spaces. How much eye, eye space do I have? That's half an eye space. If this is half an eye space. Um, okay, so the eyes got too big. So I'm going to hold judgment on this down here. And here's another way of checking this, that this distance here to the should be almost half. Now this is not quite half, it's about a third. But still, if this is the outside, this is my eye. Now it's probably more like two-fifths, but the idea is that if this... We're going to shift this a, a little bit. And so this is going to, if this comes in like this, uh, because this right here should be about just under half an eye space. Well, then that's going to change everything because now our eye is going to go down there. This distance here is going to be the same as that distance over here. We're just going to change that to there. Okay. And not only that, but since we've shrunk that, this shrinks. So it's a cascading effect. And that means all of a sudden, once we've done that, so this is going to get a little bit here, and this is going to get a little bit here. It's not going to be, it's, well, that's a quarter of an inch. Let's see, double check, see if that's the new space is still, that'll now work. Okay, so that's, we're going to use this as our eyes. And that's important because now we're going to double check everything we just, we just did. The changes we just made, that's one, that's two, that'll be fine. This is the eye space here. This is then there. That's fine. Uh, okay, so this is. Can the eyes come in a little bit? And it may seem like it's not much, but that can. Just something like that, again, can push everything. If we took. 
Again, if we take the width of the eyes right through there and then come up from the chin, you know, so if we took, you know, again, the width of the eyes and we come up from the chin, where is that? And um, so I'm going to clean this up. We're going to come back, I clean this up, readjust the chin, but we're going to go with these measurements that we've got. Okay, so I was, I was trying to reestablish. So again, just that little bit of movement changed everything by that much. There's a cascading effect of proportions. So now that we've got the eyes in the right place, Again, we're going to start looking for stuff, and that is the idea that again, the nose is just about right straight down from, from the eye. So this is going to come down. And I, if I, instead of just, I could drop a straight line, or I could just measure to make sure that we're equal distant off that center line. Uh, make sure that, that distance there is the same as that distance there. Close, but not quite. So we, we want some of this symmetry. Now for the nose, I'm just going to create like a little... Um, I hate to use the word caricature, but because it, 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 this is actually based on structure. But we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna put down something that represents the nose. We're not putting down the exact nose for this person. This is what I, what we call a placeholder. So it's only gonna stay there until I get uh, re well until I'm ready to move it. Um, if we drop a straight line through the eye like this thing is uh, like this person's crying again. This is gonna now she's got a little bit smaller of a mouth and a little fuller. So this is coming in at an angle a little bit, but if I took this, this is almost, you know, just, just a little bit in from the midpoint over is the width of the corner, not the, not the pigment on the mouth, but the corner, which ends right there. And again, that corner is, again, on, yeah, right, almost right halfway through the eye. So again, it's pretty, so we're pretty close. So I'm going to bring this down. You know, this is actually the bottom of the lip, top of the lip. We got to remember that. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and mark off the fact that we have, again, this is the absolute, you know, the mouth. Now we're going to start to put some stuff on here that's going to help us for some of the structure. So we talked a little bit about the tooth cylinder. So we're going to put on here a, a little you know this little circle through here and that little circle is, is actually gonna which kind of looks like this looks almost like a little medical mask or something like that but the idea is that this is the two cylinder like so we're also going to come down through here and we're going to look for the uh, some people used to call it the sunglasses and that is where you know your glasses will follow the sort of the the upper ridge or the you know of, uh, of your ocular cavity we're actually looking for the eyebrows so the brow is here and then it comes up so you get sort of like this this little curve through there that kind of reminds you of the top of sunglasses uh, so this is going to come over here and it arcs down towards the the uh, brow and then back up Okay, and so then we're going to have that this, again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my, my original measurements uh, for some of this. Now again, part of the hair, this is kind of where the hair is, face a little bit wider, so I'm going to go ahead and, now this I can actually see the entire width, so we're going to make sure that this is the same right to left, again, for symmetry. Um, we're also going to start to go, okay, let's, and this is where we could start to, you know, rough out, you know, the fact that we've got, you know, again, the nose and we've got the, 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 the circle there. And, um, this actually is built because the septum's a little bit higher. We're seeing a little bit more of the underside of the nose. Uh, we then have the, it comes down to the septum 
in the septum is a little space between the nose. So again, we could start to, you know, start to look for some of these, um, the structure that's going on on the nose itself. Uh, there's also sort of a little circle uh, that shows sort of that if we look through there, it's not really, it's more of an ellipse. But again, the, the wings of the nose, if you bring the rhythm up, it passes almost through the top of the circle or the what we call the ball of the nose. The ball of the nose then comes over here and it comes into the bridge of the nose. We then have, again, the top of that bridge. We have the, uh, there's the bridge right there. We then have the what we call the glabella. The glabella is a very important landmark of the face, and it's this sort of trapezoid face, or face. It's the trapezoid shape right there. So we've got this, you know, the trapezoid shape for the glabella. Uh, the glabella is gonna. Come in just a little bit, looking for the symmetry, coming down here. Uh, and then we've got, you know, again, a little bit of the outside of the nose. These are sort of the sides of the nose. You know, the nose comes down, it has a side to it. So we're going to start dealing with the fat. It's just some of these basic concepts before we start getting too crazy with the eyes and stuff because we want to look for the basic shape. So this comes down through the eye, this comes in through here, that then kicks back behind the wing of the nose. We should get a little bit of a, you know, of the, you know, the smile uh, line that's, that, that comes from here and comes down around the muzzle or the tooth cylinder, whichever term you prefer. Uh, And this is going to come up, down. Again, we're trying to get the, the this, the, this seems to be, this needs to open up a little bit more as it then goes around the, the nose a bit. And this is the underside of that nose. Understand that this is not the top side. This is the side in shadow. Uh, we we'll double check it off the center line because it looks like my nose is being starting to be a little asymmetrical, right? Uh, so again, this is you know the 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 wings of the nose go down a little further because of because of the curvature of the tooth cylinder, okay. So now we're not going to do any one feature just yet. We're going to go ahead and put in the philtrum, which is very distinct on her. Again, she's got a very distinct mouth. Um, remember that this is the bottom of the lip, you know, down here. I'm going to lift that slightly. Um, this is supposed to be the top, so oh, hold on a second. Bring that just down just a bit. This thing comes in. If this is the top of the lip, that means the you know, the filtrum can't come down. That means that this is Oh, I see what's happening. So part of it is I'm, I'm picking up part of the shadow. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm misinterpreting what's going on. So we've got a, so we do have the, uh, so I was looking at this and slamming into the filter, but this is actually the nose and the bottom of the septum is right there. And I can see that there's, there's a curve this way and then a curve this way. There's a, a corresponding curve. This curves this way, this curves slightly that way. And it was making the filtrum seem like it was longer than what it would be. And again, I would lighten this up. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, soften that up a bit. That means this is the filtrum. We then have the lips. Now, remember, this is the outside 
corners of the mouth to the outside. Uh, the mouth itself, you know, of course we have, you know, we have, we can almost break it up into, though she does have a, you know, well, her bottom lip and her top lip are almost the same. And then the space between it is just a little bit less than that. So what I could do is I go, okay, well, and then again, this is supposed to be the top of the lip. So the lip is going to be coming down with that cleft just a bit. Okay, but the idea is that this space, and this space, and that space, these three should be almost, well, this space here and this space here should be about the same, which it is. This is a little bit less. That's, that's the space between the teeth. So this this is the this is this right here is the top, right here's the bottom. This is the space where you can see some of the teeth, and so and there's a slight curvature to the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and put this this curve in. Now again we've got we've got the mouth slightly in perspective. We also have that these are the nodes, if you will, the corners of the mouth, not the where the pigment stops. So the pigment comes in a little bit from there. So we're then going to go ahead and draw her mouth. Something about like that. We're not going to get too uh, committed to it just yet, if you, we, we, you might say. Um, but we're going to go ahead and make this look like the you know the mouth is open, comes and touches together over here. And she's got a very full she got very full lips. There's some symmetry issues going on with my with my mouth, but I'll, I'll go ahead and correct them a little bit. Just a just a let's double check this this to there, that to there. This needs to extend out a little bit. Maybe just a bit. Um, this then. Let's like curve this way. Now there's almost a curve and there's like almost a reverse. So it's almost like a reverse curve going on here. And then we have again the bottom of the mouth. Now I know she's not smiling. This isn't a classic, you know, sort of happy shot. Uh, uh, I, we, we posed her this way to sort of have a little foreboding sort of look to it. And I wanted some of that. So again, we got this very full, but it, it can it, it sometimes you, what's going on there? Uh, we're just trying to give a look of, uh, so it's, it's not just a, oh, smile, cheese, sort of a shot. It was, we're trying to give something like, oh, you know, what's, what's going on? Make the, make the viewer go, ooh, what is happening? Does, there's something going on? Is there something that? And you know we we you you want that whenever you're so again we got this very very full mouth this lip is probably just a little bit maybe too full but again we're gonna keep this we're gonna we're gonna keep this for now again this is just a placeholder just like this nose is a placeholder and with this nose we have again this little. We, we we have the nostril here, uh, very small uh, nostril uh, on this nose. Uh, again, that's part of her characteristic. We want to we want to keep that. Again, you see this over here. Again, very thin. Now she's not exactly in a true profile. We can actually see a little more this side than that side, but she's pretty close. So again, we're we're going to use this. As we're drawing her, again, this would be again the, the nostrils. I want just enough enough information that I can see what I've drawn uh, as far as that goes, and that can really help on 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 a drawing like this. So now we've got that, and then we're going to go ahead and. Now I think I'm just going to indicate, I mean, uh, a little bit of the 
you know, a little bit of, of the, uh, now there's also, there's a shadow coming around the neck that makes the neck look almost like it's at a slight angle. Um, but it's not, it's just that the fact the way the shadow's wrapping it, uh, is, is doing that. Again, for right now, we'll just keep this as a cylinder for that neck. Um, and again, before we start worrying about likeness, we really need to get some more information in here. Um, you know, this comes around here, through here, up, onto the, onto the eye, through there. Uh, then it comes through here, around and up, through the eyebrow. Now, the eyebrow is a little bit more unique than what I than what I did with it. It actually lifts up to about the halfway point and then gently comes over. Now she does have an arc to her eyebrow, but you gotta be careful that you don't arc it too much or all of a sudden she'll start to look a little like the evil stepmother out of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or something. You gotta be careful. It starts to look a little sinister uh, with, with, uh, with that look. So you gotta be you're just cautious with it. You got to be a little cautious with it is all. Because it, it just, it won't look right. It'll make her look, you know, again, evil or something. So I'm just sort of softening the, and bringing in the actual curve of that, that jaw over here. We do the same thing on this side. Bring in some of those cheap bones and all that good stuff. Um... All right, so we've got, again, a little bit of this, uh, just sort of an indication of where the eye is going to sit. You know, this is the eye, eyebrow, comes down around the edge of the ocular cavity, comes over here, and then scoots into just where about where the, the eye starts. Then it's going to come around here, around the, the uh, lower lid of the eye. We're going to pick up just a little bit of the, this is the lower bit of the socket. So we're going to pick up just a little bit of that and then it comes up there. So we're just trying to look for some of the, the basic shapes. Uh, if we don't have the, so I'm going to double check some of the, the cheek we're through here. We're going to check the, some of the, the, the shape through, through of that cheek, you know, and, and through into, into the, through, up and through and into the forehead as far as that goes. And these are called rhythm lines. Now, you don't have to do this, but it really helps start paying attention to what, what uh, the rhythm lines are doing. This is, there's sort of, this uh, comes up, there's a bone, then the bone on the skull, and we saw this, that there's sort of an arc through there, and we pick it up on, on the skin. We pick up this little arc that's, you know, a bony protrusion up there on the brow. That's going to help us to, and then we have this little bit, again, this picks up through here on the brow. And then we have, this is the rounding of that forehead. This is part of that, um, you know, this, there's, I believe it's called the frontalis, but it's the absolute roundest point. And it has a little bit of a, a, a bulbousness to it. In other words, a little, a little bit of a bulge, almost like our little muzzle down here. And so, and then we're going to start putting some hair on here. We're going to try to start to kind of rough out all the basic shapes to see, because we won't be able to tell until we actually start to rough in all, all these basic sorts of shapes, if this is going to look like this person, um, as far as that goes. Let's see, we're gonna, we've got 
Your shoulders are going to be back here a little bit. And you're going to have, so there's going to be a little bit of the, the shoulder coming down and, and through and on, on here and coming down through her shoulder. Shoulders going to be way off the, off the page uh, as far as that goes. Neck's a little short though, but yeah, her neck should come down a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think this needs to drop too, just a little bit the the back muscle or the. Uh, easiest muscle that comes at the back I think needs to be down a little bit more and so I'm just trying to think of you know again some of these basic structures that are happening on the face you can even come over and go hey how, how much is that to there that's almost to the again to the nostrils so we'd say well let's see from here to the nostrils how far and that means that we got to have you know that much hair we do the same thing over here how much hair do we see and and uh, you know we could bring that again in from the center line almost almost a third not quite so it's almost half of this but it's actually just a little bit more and we'd say okay that's so that one's not too bad and again so we can go ahead and bring this in here um, So again, I th we're, we're looking at this thing, we're trying to ask ourselves, hey, you know, what's, how much, you know, how much hair do we have here? We also have the fact that we've got, you know, this, where the hair actually starts to come in front of the forehead, and it really starts to play up um, the cheeks. The cheekbones, you know, all that good stuff. That's the way this hair is draping down and going up into there. And so we have where this is coming off the face is right about here. And it's very dark back there, so you probably can't see this on the on the picture I've got. But there's it's the ear is back here in shadow. So we've got the ear back in shadow, and then we've got you know the face. Like so. We can see where this comes up here. And then we've got, you know, again, where you can see the hair come sort of, hair comes through there, and then we've got another bit of hair that comes around, like so. And then there's, and so this, this hair is, is layered, uh, as some people might, you know, might be the term for it. But we can start to see the hair spilling down through here, which is really, you know, very, very cool. As the hair is cascading down the face. So, so 
So we got this hair coming out here. So this is just the basic. And again, sometimes, well, a lot of times, if I can, I'll bring a tone over this because what this will do is sometimes we can get lost in all the pieces. Whereas once we start to bring a tone in here, we can start to see how the, the shapes look together. So we can see, hey, does there need to be more volume to the hair? I think the answer is yes. I think, I think at least just a little bit as it comes off the crown, I think this needs just a little bit more volume through there. And so, you know, that's just little, little stuff where we're going to be looking. So this has a bit of hair that's, that's coming back. Uh, this is, and then it kind of comes down again. It's coming down along through the face. It hits here and it starts to, you know, go along the, the, uh, sort of the ocular cavity and then around that, again, around that, uh, around the cheekbone. And we can really see the curvature down through there into the jaw, you know, and this is probably a little, just a little too much, I think. I think I need to, there we go. So now, there we go, that's rounding enough. So sometimes people, we get, we get so excited with, when we're doing portraiture that we, we jump right into stuff and we need to, instead we need to hang back. So if this basic shape doesn't look right, the head won't look right. It doesn't matter how great we do the eyes. It doesn't matter how great we do the nose. It doesn't matter any of that. If we can't get the basic shapes to look the way they're supposed to look, um, wow. So again, the perspective. So I made, I went ahead and put place the ears where they would normally be, but the ears are lower because again the perspective. So that's that's important as we're putting stuff in. To look for this stuff on this uh, on this portrait. Hmm. This looks like this should come out just a little bit more. more of a C-curve, look over here a little bit more, see if we can get just a little more out of this as this comes around the head, comes out a little more, I think out through there, comes down and it just flows down onto the shoulders. Um, and now before I, again I start placing eyes and, and too much stuff, we're going to double check this basic shape. All right, so we're now ready to kind of rough in the features a little more. And so now we're actually going to deal with the eyes. So let's go ahead and grab my pencil over here and remember the tear duct belongs with the eyes in the eye space so we'll start with that and again she's got very very large eyes now I'm going to go ahead and start I'm going to include sort of the the bottom lid shape Like so. So this includes the, the bottom lid. And then we're actually going to deal with the eye. So we've got a 
And that way I can also check to make sure there's, you know, what's the, what's the eye, eyebrow. So if this is the eyebrow, and again, I'm, I'm still, you know, again, I, I, I'm, I'm not getting too committed. I'm putting it in there, but I'm still keeping it a little on the light side so I can always darken that. But there's going to be a, a, a point at which we're going to go, okay, now we're, we're going to go ahead and go all out. Now, actually, they, they should be coming out here for the lids. But remember, we've got the three basic... the up, over, and down angle that are rounded. And then we've got the basic two angles over here. So we've got this. It almost break hers into three because of the way that her eye is shaped. That will happen. All right, so we've got the, again, we've got the bottom lid and the top lid. Now I'm going to round this out a little bit. You can't see as much of her tear duct. It's almost hidden in the corner of her eye. Now we also, there's something else that's very, very important that we haven't done yet. And that's going to be what we're, what we're going to do next. All right, so I had to I had to modify the eye just a bit. Like so. Now remember that we've got, you know, the fact that this is wrapping around an eye, we're going to Now we're below her a little bit more and so We're going to see less of the thickness of the bottom lid. That double line there is supposed to show the fact that this lid has a thickness. That's probably a bit on the thick side for as much, for as low as the eye is. So I'm going to come over in here. I'm going to blow this out a little bit. Coming up the eye, we'll see some a little bit now. The eye line, the the eye line. I keep saying the eye line, not her eye line, but the eye line of the viewer is low enough that we're not going to see very much. Usually, we see quite a bit of the lower lid because we're used to looking someone straight in the eye, you know, or close to it. Unless you're, you know, unless you got someone that's a whole lot taller than you are. Uh, but because of that, we're going to see. Well, because this person's lower. The, the viewer again is down here. They're going to see a little a lot more of the upper the the thickness of the upper lid. Now this this isn't this is the thickness of the skin. Okay, so this is the fact that this eye a little bit of squeaking there with a the pencil. This this eye has a th has a thickness to it. Not the eye, pardon me, the, the lid. So this is the part of the skin that touches the actual sclera or the white of the eye. And this right up here is where the lash is going to be growing from. Because again, the skin has a thickness. It's not razor thin. And we have to show the volume. Or if, you, if you don't, your eye will start to look very, very weird. Um... A little bit too much volume through there, but still. Okay, and then we're gonna put in the 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 eye um, the the iris, the color part of the eye, and she's looking way into the corner of the eye, so we see very little of it. And before we get again too committed with this, we're gonna go ahead and. 
Let's put our eyeball in there for right now. Her eyeball. We're putting in the iris, but the color part for right now. Okay. And then we've got the, she's got a lid. Now the lid up here, we don't see very much of it. It's not till, and there's a particular name for this fold. I can't recall off the, off the top of my head right now, but it's, this is what we, people call the eyelid, where you put the eyeshadow and stuff. For those that wear eyeshadow, that's where you'd yeah, go ahead and put that. Okay. And again, she has a very light, uh, it's not very prominent, the lower lid on, on her. And you gotta be very careful if you, if you make that too prominent. Again, it's gonna start to look like she hasn't slept in three weeks and we don't want that. Okay. And so we got, you know, again, we've got this eye over here, just a little bit of it. Opens there. Now this is all in shadow. So right now it looks like it's a line on our actual eye. But again, this is going back and it's that that creates that, that linear element because you have this lid that's dark because it's in shadow because it's underneath the eye itself. Now this is actually not wrapping the eye quite right. So I'm going to go ahead. This is part of the reason why I was like, I'm just going to, we're going to, you know, put a little bit of the eye in. So in that case, if we have to change something, which this we did, we can do it without much, you know, too many problems. So again, this, I'm going to be careful with this. Okay. So this comes up a little bit more. There we go. And that goes right through there. Okay, so um, that looks weird right now. And that also looks like it's, it's coming to a point that needs to round through there a little bit more. And this is all in shadow because this is, again, the skin on the eye. So that's in shadow, right? And we're not going to render this. We, you know, we could. Well, obviously, this is the white of the eye is round. Uh, this looks like this should have a little bit more volume to it, perhaps. But now we're, you know, and again, this is in shadow too. The fact that the eyes are are not white; they're set back. This is round, so it's going to be getting uh, darker as it goes towards the corner. Um, you have the eyelid that's going to be a little darker. You know, like that. Um, we have the fact, again, that the eye is in shadow and is back in sort of a case. So, I mean, we could start to put on some of the, the very basic uh, shadow shapes on here if we if we so chose, there's no reason, you know, to really kind of help, you know, to see you know, and describe some of the, some of what's going on with this face. Um, and then of course we've got the, the eyelash, or, or not the eyelash, but the eyebrow. But again, I'm gonna I'm gonna first before I start coming back here and really, you know, getting into that eye, which you know some, some people we jump in too quickly before we. But we love the eyes, and we'll start detailing the eye before we come over here and see. Hey, is the is, are we sure that that's the, the eyes in the right place? Are we sure that's the shape we need? Are we, are we sure that the other parts of the face again if the if the eye looks great, but the rest of the face is off, it doesn't matter, right? Um, so, I'm gonna go ahead and just 
the mouth. Again, we opened it up a little bit. We have the three nodes on the top lip. This is oh, her, hers a little more prominent, but three muscles. This overlaps, and then we've got the longer muscles behind it. Soften that out. We're going to go ahead and remember the two lips. This is the rounder lip. So this lip back here is, should be darker. It's the flatter lip as far as that goes. Um, we've got some shadow coming up through here. You know, again, we can start to, again, because sometimes, you know, we think, oh, it's, it's all about the the features. It's it's just as much about you know the the shadows on the on the face and the features. Even just in a, in just a very general way, uh, becomes becomes very important that we give a nod. Give a nod at, at what we're actually seeing. As opposed to ignoring it, that would never be a good idea. Um, so we also have now we can you know we have the the neck down here now the, the neck is further back so it's got to push in in other words it can't be as, as light or as bright a contrast and if we leave it white it'll be too much contrast this the lightest light is as dark as this right here which is in shadow on the face and so we want to at least again have a give a nod to some of that that again this we, we've got a little bit of the uh, if you just a go to the underside of this of this face or you know the underside of her jaw just a little bit we can see some of that. And this thing comes here, down the throat there. Uh, again, this is a form shadow. This is cast shadow coming off the off the hair, like so. So you know this would be all in deeper shadow coming under there, as far as that goes. Again, you wouldn't you wouldn't do this with graphite. You'd have to spend a little bit more time getting that graphite to to lay down a nice even tone. And if I'd been doing this, you know, if we, if I, this, this was nothing, this is still I consider this a sketch. We're just we're, we're sketching. But if I was doing a drawing, we'd start to try to bring in some some things that bring it, that start to. Because I got lines going this way, and it's denying the fact that this is a volume. This is a volumetric. This is a cylinder, and you start to use what's called cross contour lines and all that good stuff to start to have you know get some of that going on. But let's go ahead and start to you know again finish some of this out just a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna come back to the nose. I think the nose on on this. Yeah, it's probably one of the more, it's really very interesting, uh, I find, on this particular portrait. That, okay, this is coming up here. This thing comes across the glabella. And she's got a little smaller bridge than the one I gave her, so this comes in. And this comes back out. Uh, on the bridge of that nose. This is actually catching the light. So the light coming from this side, right? 
Uh, so this would be an in, 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 in shadow. That right through there. Um, this thing comes over here onto the ball of the nose. Now I need to bring a little bit of that ball in. Uh, and there's a highlight right along the edge of that ball. And then we have the outside edge of the cone. Now, if this doesn't make enough sense to you, watch my video on the basic architecture of the of the nose, uh, because it's really important that we know. Okay, this is this is again a highlight that's on the the ball. Um, I'm gonna have to get into this a little bit more because right now I kind of lost that with just what I just what just happened. Um, what just happened was the highlight was not put exactly in the right place threw off all the structure okay um, there's a little tone here behind that and that's the the side of the nose transitioning with the cone of the nose and the cone of the nose is that there's a cone that this is you know a little bit you know this is the outside edge of the cone and the ball we call the ball of nose is the rounded dome, if you will, on that nose itself. Um, and the interesting thing is, if we take that outside edge, it dives into and describes the nostril shape. And so it's it's pretty important stuff. Again, it's it's pretty fascinating how this. You know, people want to talk about eyes, but the nose has as much or more going on than, than anything else in the face. Um, so again, we're going to come through here. We're going to put down the, uh, we got that there along the, along this, uh, catching just a little bit. Light along the septum. We then have, you know, she has a very small, uh, nostril as far as that goes like so and we're going to go ahead and darken that in a little bit okay for that nostril Again, we have sort of a ridge uh, that's down right through there that comes up and into the, the filter a little bit. As far as that goes. And then have the underside of the, the wing of the nose. This is the underside of the wing. It goes up. Right, like that. It gets a little darker as it starts to come around. There's a, again, this is the side, the side of the, the, the cone right through there. And that starts to get a little bit darker. So, there's all these subtle little planes in the nose, again, that are really quite uh, fascinating. Right now, this looks flat as a pancake, but we could go ahead and again, this is supposed to be in, this is supposed to be in shadow. This is supposed to be really quite dark. Like so. We've kind of lost some of the, it's got a little bit of a turned up nose as well. We've lost some of that. This needs to come up a little bit more, this, the, the ball up here. Okay. So again, we have the side of the nose, like that. 
So this is the bottom, that's the top. This is the core shadow. Coming up here and then coming around. A little bit of reflected light on there. This is and comes around here, comes there. Got that little bit of reflected light. Then we've got the outside of this. And we, we can just take this line and look for the little arc. Again, working right and left to the center line. Like so. So then we're going to come up through here, again the outside, addressing the outside of the, the dome of the nose. Um, we're going to bring this across, make sure that this is so and again this is in shadow this, this is but this is the underside so the underside of this would be a little darker okay so we got the again we got this underside of this nose um, now I've lost a little bit of the shape of this, of the nostril, so I'm going to come back in here because again this should really be giving us that, that arc down um, as far as that goes. Again, we're, I'm just darkening this up so we can actually see it. Now the, there's no more time for being timid. This is where we've got to go ahead and, and put the information in. Okay, and then we can see that this, of course, the dark, the dark, but this also wraps around on the again on the underside of that nose. This again, we have a little bit of this coming down and under the the ball coming through there. There's a. A little bit of an indication. Of that ball. And then we've got, so again, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be trying to detail this as much. I should have just uh, done this as a, uh, left it as sort of a contour drawing. But it's hard not to get a little carried away sometimes. So you have a light tone and then we have the shallow side. So the shallow side comes pretty wild because it comes up the, the, through here. Then it comes over here. It comes over here. So she's got quite an interesting um, bridge in her nose. We're going to soften this. Um, the, the curvature of her nose got a little bit too, again, too skinny. So again, we're going to open it up just a bit, the, the ball of that, um, again, of that nose. And again, we've got the, there's a core shadow through here. 
on that on the ball of that nose and um that that really helps some things here with the you know with the face. All right, so I, th I think um, So we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and start to put in some of the Just a little bit of the, a um, little bit of the value here. Yeah, it's nice to get so. I don't have to necessarily make this a full value drawing, but there's a cash out through here that's really quite important. Uh, we've got the, again, I think I've got, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to back up just a minute uh, because this is, I, I need to really get this other eye in. And again, this, sometimes I get, you know, I, I certainly get excited about drawing portraits as much as anybody. Um, and sometimes to my detriment. Because we all, you know, we all, you know, a lot of times artists will make the same mistakes as, as, as other people. They're like, I want to get to the eyes. I want to get to the, I want to get to that good stuff. I want to, I want to make it look, you know, phantasm, you know, just fantastic, just fantastic. I want to really get this thing to look good. And that makes all kinds of sense. Why wouldn't you want it to look good, right? And so... So we can do some of that. Um, let's go ahead and We've got again, so we've got the three edges there.
So. And this is the little node down here between the, or at the ends of the mouth. We'll call it the, the bean shape, if you will. Um, now, gotta be a little careful with this because what's what's going on here? Well, we, we've lost a little something. Through this, that you know, she doesn't look. She looks concerned in the photograph. We don't have that in the, in the in the drawing just yet. And part of it is because this right here becomes more prominent as you drop your. It has to do with some of the musculature as you drop the muscles, uh, as you're looking at stuff. I have to be careful that this too. Uh, this starts to look like she's smiling, and she's really not. So sometimes there's this little th again we're not worrying a ton about you know expression right now but there's it just goes to show how a little bit can really change the feel of how something looks just by You know, again, for just a moment ago, it looked like she was smiling, uh, and now not so much. And it really had to do with the way I, th this, this, this changes shape through here. Uh, there's some curvature that we got. So the mouth is built on, a, on an arc. And the way that you're looking at this person, the arc is actually going this direction, which is, we assume... We associate with a smile, but the thing is, is that she's not smiling. She's actually, you know, the, the look we were looking for was concerned. And so this will actually tug this down a little bit so, so that it doesn't look as much like she is trying to smile. Now, the other part is that little hook I put in there just by erasing that hook, which isn't there. It was just to kind of remind me of the muscle. See how that turns down? That shows you that that mouth is not smiling. So, again, it's just little stuff like that that can really be the difference between what the expression is. You know, she still has corners in her mouth. It's just, is the are the corners pulling it up into a slight smile? No, this isn't the Mona Lisa. This is uh, you know someone that seems to be a little leery, uh, which is kind of what we were going for. We wanted sort of a look of foreboding uh, and again as you're as you're you know drawing some of the stuff it's it's little stuff like this but we're, we're not we're not worried a lot about that uh, again we could go ahead and come in here and ask ourselves and say hey is is the uh, is the um, that was a little bit too much Are the basic shapes right? Is the basic proportion right? Are the, are the eyes where they need to be? Are the, does the nose look like it's a nose and, and stuff like that? There's, you know, things like that that are, you know, just more important many times than what we, we uh, can think than what we will think. Sometimes what we think they are, when we first start drawing. Because there's just so much, especially on a face. There's so many things to keep in mind it's really quite it's extraordinary it really is that there's you know there is no such thing as a as a simple face uh and and to me that's what, what makes them, them interesting to draw is they're such an amazing architecture they're such an amazing you know the, the way the, the the human face is put together is pretty extraordinary stuff uh, as far as that goes. Um, a little highlight there. A little bit of a highlight right there. Uh, now again, she's, she doesn't, it doesn't look right. And that's partly because of the fact we haven't got in here and, and done 
a whole lot of stuff really, but let's go ahead and put a little bit of that in where we're going to go ahead and start to go, all right, uh, where's, you know, where's, there's a core shadow as this turns, this thing comes around the eye right through here, this then picks up a little bit through there, this goes under the lid, so this is some of these important shapes. I still haven't detailed her eyes, uh, but I think they're pretty close to what we need. But the, the, the point is, is that a lot of times we'll hold off uh, on things longer than we might think, because again, we're just, I still might decide that there's a couple changes that need to be done on this, on this person's face. They're not going to be, you know, major, but they could still be like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do A, B, C, or D, um, because I think it's necessary for what's happening. Okay, so she's all in shadow on this side of the face. And I want enough of this information so that we can... So right now I'm still... If you've, if you've taken drawing before, if you're taking my drawing class, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about breaking things into light versus shadow. That's where we still are. We're, we're at the point where we still haven't broken this down into light versus shadow all the way just yet. We're still getting this roughed in. So I'm going to see if I can fill this in, in the next minute or two. And then we're going to come back and we're going to, you know really um, bring in the contour on these on, on this mouth and get this looking like a mouth uh, as far as that goes So again, we finally just barely got a tone where we have broken everything into, again, the... Now, I haven't done the hair yet either. Uh, we're not going to get super into hair, but we are going to talk about it. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and come back and we're going to reestablish these features and we're going to get this finished out. All right, so we're back. So I know this looks probably quite a bit different from where we were before I left for the most part. Um, and I, I think I told you I was using charcoal because uh, it can, it's just easier to see than when you use graphite. Uh, and since we weren't going to turn this into some 10 or 12 hour video of rendering in graphite, I wasn't, I just, it's a lot, you know, just a lot easier to use the charcoal to show up. So what I mostly did was, uh, before we left, I was trying to put down the value in the shadows. Uh, one thing about charcoal is usually a little bit more texture to the paper helps. This is pretty smooth paper. It's just a step above printer paper, you know, that you have in your printer. Um, it's, it, which is pretty slick stuff. Very hard to do charcoal on that. And this is, you know, just about the same stuff. And so um, when you go over this, unless you take a lot of time, it, it takes a long time to build up a, an, an even tone. And even though this is more even, this is far from being, you know, completely smooth. It looks a little smoother in the camera even than what it actually is in real life. And so instead of letting you watch me sit here for an hour and a half, basically I would put down a layer and then smooth it out, put down a layer, blend it out, put down a layer, blend it out to try to fill in all the little spaces that you get. Or you could have watched me do this and very slowly, that's totally outside the screen. You can't even see that. But you, you could have watched me, I guess, you know, make a tone very clean tone, but that again would have taken, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, something like that. And again, I didn't want to do that to you. So again, all I did was I took, um, 
a whole lot of this is vine charcoal and uh, vine charcoal is uh, pretty nice in that it and also it can it's it's sometimes it you hear that sound uh, it can be a little bit like nails on a chalkboard to listen to that on a you know on a recording over and over and over again but uh, we were putting that down and this that was the hard stuff hard vine charcoal this is soft vine charcoal and it'll put down a tone but the thing is with with vine charcoal uh, if you if you sneeze it's gone uh, so it, it, it doesn't stay very well to the paper but what it does a great job of is if I'm trying to get this to fill in um, it, it wipes off but it, it basically just smooths out the surface a little bit uh, and so that's what I was doing I was taking vine charcoal back into this side and over an hour and a half I I got to be more uniform and less scratchy looking um, and the reason I did this, I know I think at the very beginning, I said, we're not doing a, a completed toned drawing, and we're not. This is not, this is far from it. If I was going to do a rendering on this thing, I'd be working on this for another three, maybe four hours, trying to really get these, these tones to do what I wanted. But by putting those tones down, we can see more clearly the shapes. And uh, unless I'm doing like a, what's called a true contour drawing, where you just leave the lines and you don't put any value down whatsoever, uh, well, then we wouldn't have had the value. But this this uh, picture, I think I said in the beginning, is a kind of kind of a crummy picture, <laughs> um, and it's really mu it's it's very much about tone on this picture. And so I went ahead and put some of the tone in here. So again, we wanted just enough tone so now we could see the relationship between the hair. The relationship between the eyes and the forehead and it's just a little easier once we have just even some basic tone so is this finished no but at the very least I've, I've got enough down where I can start to see all the relationships of all the different features of the face and I can make you know some uh, some some better decisions about what I'm gonna do to finish this out now and again we're not gonna get we're not here to talk about rendering hair. We're not, I was going to talk about it in a general way. And what I mean in a general way is that there's a definite, you want to think of hair. Most people usually start by thinking of it as individual strands. What we want to do is thinking of it as, as volumes. This catches, this is going into shadow. This up here is catching light. So you have this big, huge family of this, this strand, if you will. And this is going into shadow. This is catching light. This is going into shadow. And so we want to think of it almost, I had teachers used to say, like, it's almost like it's a towel or something. You know, you want to think of this big volume mass rather than individuals. I like to talk about it. Uh, that's a, certainly a great way to think about it. The other way is sculpture. You can't do individual hairs on a sculpture. They have to stylize and group together these volumes to make them read like hair. And if you've seen some of the wonderful sculptures in Rome and Athens and you know, the ones done during the Renaissance and the Baroque period and the Rococo periods and Bernini sculptures and things. There are, you know, you'll see hair where you're like, holy Moses, that's amazing. But it is not individual strands. And it's because it's treated as a volume. In other words, a big mass of shape that's undulating and twisting and turning and catching the light. And I'm going to do just a tiny bit of that. But we're also going to go ahead and... We're going to uh, put in the features. We've got enough here where I can go, yeah, I'm satisfied with what the features are doing, uh, that I can go ahead and we can darken them up. Um, so let's start with the eyes. So again, the they, they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. So let's go ahead and um, go ahead and um, get this eye put in here. So, you know, we've got the, the, the top lid, the bottom lid. We have the, uh, the tear duct that we can see here. Tear duct there. Um, the tear duct is, is fairly, you know, it's fairly dark. It's very red. Uh, so we want to be careful of that. We have, her eyes are looking very much to the side. 
Um, and so we've got, you know, where we've got this, where we can see, again, that turn to the side. We said, all right, we've got the, the thickness of the lid where this is actually touching. This is actually touching the, uh, the, the sclera. So this is the, this is the part of the lid that's actually writing on the eye. And so that's, you know, that's going to be in shadow. So right now when we leave it as a double line, it's going to look kind of weird. But it's going to actually, it's going to go into shadow. Now, if you look at this, her eyes are really popping. And what I mean by that is they're, they're, they look really white. They look too white. And the reason why is because this is white in shadow. So if we look at the skin out here, the skin here is lighter than those eyes. But you say, well, wait a minute, that's, she's probably pink or, you know, maybe, she, you know, or olive, depending on her, you know, um, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I photographed this gal. Um, but basically because this is white, but it's deep in shadow because it's in an eye socket, the eyes should not be too white. So this right here is too white. So I left it this way so that I, I can show you that we're going to, we're going to have to push the eyes back until the eyes are darker than, you know, that right there. Uh, and so, and, and there's still going to be some of the subtlety, like we have that this is, you know, a, a sphere. So there's going to be a gradation going from darker, getting lighter. There's also, because it's, you know, the eye, there's going to be a little bit of the, of the cast shadow that this casts across the sclera and across the, uh, the, um, the white part is the sclera. It also casts across the iris. So this will be a little darker. And sometimes it's so dark, people will merge the uh, underside of the lid. So again, this, we have a little bit of this being in cast shadow. You know, again, now I guess I should, I should say first off, we weren't going to render this. But I guess I really got into the whole thing about the eye. So if we're doing an eye, there's going to be on the uh, iris, the color part. It gets darker and then it comes, gets lighter as more light shines into the eye. Like so. There's, of course, the outside of the eye that is usually a little darker. Sort of, a, uh, you know, the, out, the contour of that gets a little darker as this is starting to come. Um around the eye and because it's going into shadow it's going to be getting darker up here and lighter as it comes down we then are going to have the pupil back here and the pupil is going to be since this is in shadow it's going to be very very dark you know so we could certainly start getting in here to where we actually bring this this eye out um there's also a bit of a highlight just a, a no it's it's not too bright you got to be careful if that's back in you know back there where you can't hardly see it it's not going to be that bright of a highlight so you, you don't want it too too light uh and so and then there's even a little bit of a highlight on the sclera as far as that goes because again it's wet and if this doesn't have any tone on it you won't be able to see that that little highlight it won't it won't work so Again, we've got, you know, just a little bit where a little bit goes a long way. We're now, this is going to start to look more and more. If you want to, you can even start, there's some, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the, the strand fibers in the, in the eye, but they, again, they get darker as they go up and lighter as they come down. So remember that again, the form shadows have to conform to the basic, uh, the, the pardon me, form shadows have to conform. That's not right. The details have to conform to the form shadows. So this goes into here where this is actually much, and then we can see the fold. So this right here is pretty light. And then we actually get where it comes into the fold on that eye where it actually really starts to pick up some of those nice, rich, Those nice rich darks in here, especially right through there. All right, and then you know again we we can go ahead and bring this down here, and this is that there, and 
you know, we could go ahead and, and now we're making it, you know, look like an eye. And we haven't even, you know, we haven't even done the whole thing with the, uh, with the, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, we haven't put the eyelashes on yet. I was trying to say. So again, this would be, again, that part of this uh, where the, the, the light's starting to hit. That would be a little bit of a core shadow. Uh, we would come around here. Then I guess this, of course, would be, again, part of this dark in the corner of that eye. This right here is supposed to be lighter than the, than the folded part um, right through here. So we want to make sure that that's a little softer so it doesn't look like a crease because this is, again, doesn't look like a crease in there. Something about like that. And we say, all right, well, don't forget, I don't know how we could forget, but we also have the, the eyebrow here. So we have the eyebrow that comes up and over here. And the eyebrow, of course, I have the eyebrow starting a little bit too, it needs to come over a little bit more this brow. So let's go ahead and do that. Like about like so. Um, maybe that comes just a little bit more. And then we'll just go ahead and Very quickly, make you know, put an eyebrow on there, and um, we say, All right, well, now we're going to go ahead and there's some eyelashes here, too. So we could go ahead and you know, you got to make sure that we don't get the, the eyelashes where they look like they're uh, we don't want the spider eyelashes going on you. So we go ahead and bring some of the you want to make them look like they're individual lashes. You got to be very careful of that. So again, you can go over here and just very quickly put some, bring some eyelashes on uh, on her. Uh, as far as that goes. So, and we're just going to do an indication. We're not going to sit here and go nuts. You could get some people really get into those eyelashes, and those eyelashes will start to curl up and get really large and, and it starts to look like a Maybelline commercial or like she's got eyelash extensions. That's not what we're looking for. Not not for right now. You know, we're not trying to do an illustration for, you know, some sort of um, eye company or something. Now I've changed her eyebrows a little bit. I didn't want, again, too much of that arch uh, that's happening through there. That's just, you got to be really careful if you got an arc that, that's that much. Or again, it starts to look like, you know, she's like, like the evil stepmother from some children's book story or something because of the, it just really, just for whatever reason, that arch looks sinister. And so we're going to go ahead and, and take that out. Uh, so again, we'll just go ahead and this is the basis, the basics of the eye. You can see maybe just a little bit of the thickness of that. This would be a little bit of the thickness of that. This would be the bottom lid. Uh, if we were going to say, okay, that's the bottom lid. From the bottom lid, we might have just a few. You got to be careful of this too, because the, the eyelashes on the on the bottom of the of the lid are a little shorter, so you don't want to make, make it seem like um, she's wearing again these fake you know fake lashes on the bottom of the eye. We don't want that. Um, so again, we're just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and just emphasize where the shadows are, what the shadows are doing, uh, just a little bit more. We're going to look for the shapes, um, the, the, the shape of this, uh, the shadow wrapping around the face, 
pretty important stuff. I mean, it, it's it, as far as that goes. And again, I'm not trying to render here. There's a lot of I played a little bit of a tone. This 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 picture again has a lot of a lot of tone to it. It's really more about tone because it's it's just it's a bad photograph, and so uh, all we can see really uh, the contours have been lost, but the the tone is still there. So. as this goes you know we go ahead and this is and supposedly that again part of the, the shadow that wraps the face um, this got blown out so again this is part of the you know that sort of the smile line if you will that kind of comes around the mouth And sometimes you get sort of like this little S curve to it because it's it, it's coming over and around that muzzle, or in other words, the tooth cylinder. That's also you know fairly distinct on on this person, um, and the way the the uh, the light has is is, is wrapping this. Um, you got to be careful with this too if you get a little bit too. Um, too distinct like I think that's maybe a little too much uh, we can go ahead and you know you get your eraser or what have you and and try to soften that up um, if it's again if it's gotten just a little too too much too out, too out of control uh, we can go ahead and come back in here and re you know define Oh, that edge is really off. <laughs> Keep thinking it's going to be over here and it's all the way over there, but that's all right. All right, so there we go. Soften that up a bit. All right, so again, we're going to come on over here. Um, now we've got the side of the face. Again, where the it, it, it's it's very important how how the we're going to we've got this you know the hairline uh, looking a bit at how the hairline is and we've got the hair now the hair comes up because this is hair growing out from the head but this is all in shadow we can't see individual hairs that's just in shadow as this hair comes up and in front so the hair here we, we get where this hair is coming here so it's folding back and in on itself and we can't see this this is in deep shadow but this comes down here you're gonna see some of a little bit of the the, the sideburn um, or if she it's really long well then that might just come straight down and I can't tell it's just so dark back there but I think like sometimes this will be tucked behind the ear uh, there's other times where this will this again comes here and it comes across the ear because it's so long. And again, I can't tell what's going on. Uh, the, I'm, I'm guessing that she probably didn't have a side burn. Uh, that would, I, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, why would that make sense? Uh, I mean, a short one. So we'll bring this across like that. This is where this is kind of coming, you know, across. And this is again, this, this is in deep shadow. So as this comes and then this comes down. And this comes over and we can just see some of the the most basic light to dark shapes showing the the main groups so this is a little group where it opens up into and see the the shadow in the hair this is in you know in very deep shadow this bit of the hair whoops we broke that we broke through there um, As far as that goes, like that. We've got the ear back here. Now the ear is very, you know, again lost in, in shadow. But we're going to go ahead and at least put an indication of where the bottom of the ear is. 
even though it's again pushed back and deep in shadow. Um, this again is again very deep shadow down through here as far as that goes. Uh, if we look over here again this uh, comes across here again this starts to turn is turning away from the light so you get where you start to get a little bit of a shadow here we also have that this bit of hair here is a little bit just catching a little bit more light up through here and then you've got where this breaks and opens up just a little bit so again we're, we're, this is clumps of hair this is an individual hairs this is you know entire families if you will uh, of this uh, of the way this hair is coming back and across and and twisting and turning and doing all this sorts of, of stuff but for some reason this is a little bit and catching a little bit of sh uh, opening up probably it's not catching shadow it's opening up and we're seeing a little bit of you know uh, shadow beyond which is either on the face or something like that and again this is this gets really really dark through here so it's hard to see exactly what's happening on this hair and this becomes darker as it comes down but it's not as dark as this deep stuff that's again where this has come projecting out and this is deep in the in the shadows back there so we're just going to do a little bit to indicate some of the form of this of this hair we have a piece, this kind of hair comes kind of across here. And we've got another bit where it looks like, and again, I've got some strange glare on this hair. So, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do my best to see in here. There's also not very much detail on the hair. Uh, the biggest thing that's the easiest to see is that there is a highlight that comes across this family. It kicks in, then it goes up across this family a little bit. And then it kicks back and then it goes up on this family a little bit and then it comes so and then there's on up here there's a cash there's a little bit of a cast shadow so up here you've got something that almost kind of starts to tuck in and around and up and then that i mean it, it's it's pretty uh you've seen this probably in comic books they'll, they'll just leave it as a shape like that many times uh but it's, it's describing again the, the, the light casting a shadow on here. And then this is a little bit of a highlight right there. And so then this would be darker. Okay, so all this hair here is darker than what we just what we just played with. Kind of blew out some of that with that with that tone. So I have to come back in here a little bit. Like so. Uh, again, this is going to be again a little bit of light up here, as far as that goes. You know, all that good stuff. Um, and again, this gets very, very dark, and then much darker down there. So uh, this this hair is very, very general. But if you get the just the basic ideas of what the hair is doing. Many times that's all you need. So on this picture, we can't really see very much detail at all on any of the hair. And so we're just looking, and all we can see are just some very, very basic uh, shapes and families that are either lighter or darker, depending on where they are turned to the light or whether they're opening up and we can see a little bit darker family of hair beyond or, you know, it, it's... It, it, it's very simple stuff and that's a good thing because when we when you start with hair a lot of times we we, we and sometimes we get in our own head we start doing stuff oh yeah I'm, I'm rocking it oh yeah this is amazing oh yeah and then when and then you come back like an hour later you're like oh goodness that that wasn't what I you know we start getting that self-talk where you oh yeah I'm rocking and rolling it and it's like you're trying to convince yourself where you're at and that's never ever a good thing whenever we start getting into that mode and everyone's done this this is I, I always tell people you know everyone when you learn to draw has to start at the same place they have to start at the beginning and anyone who is you know um, 
honest, uh, would tell you, yeah, everyone's everyone's done that. Where you, you start talking to yourself, and I'm not just talking to yourself, but I mean where you start trying to, it's almost like you're trying to convince yourself how, how you're just, you know, doing so well. And a lot of times it's born out of, you know, fear and desperation because of the time we're putting in and all this sort of stuff. And, and, and you didn't. So uh, do as, as well as you're trying to convince yourself you did. And, uh, and believe me, I, I've done some of that, done a lot of that. Uh, when you're doing an assignment that decided whether you ate that night, you know, that month or not, and it's three or four in the morning and you're trying to get that thing to finish it and you're, you know, you swear you're almost there. Yeah, you'll start talking to yourself a really good game about how it's, you know, people are going to stop and, you know, and, and, and you know, society itself will be redefined by how, you know, whatever, whatever the narrative is in your head. And then, you know, usually this would happen to me, especially, especially late at night. And then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up and it, and it was almost always a train wreck. You're like, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? And what you're thinking is you wanted to get paid. You know, and you wanted to get some sleep. And you wanted to, you know, you name it. And so you'd begin to try to talk yourself into what it's what you're doing. So this is coming around the cheekbone. Again, look at the, the, the picture for the basic shape. So this coming around the cheek, this coming around the chin. This uh, then comes over here around the uh, the jaw, and we start to pick up the neck, right? And don't don't be distracted by the form shadow because the neck is back here, and there's a shadow on it, and the neck is over here, and there's a shadow on it, uh, and then the neck starts here, but then the hair comes in front of it a little bit. So we've got to be, you know, again when, when you're doing stuff. Try to really, you know, look at it and go, what am I seeing? Try to try to ask yourself, what do, not what I think I'm seeing, what am I actually seeing? Uh, and that can really help. In the beginning, it's hard just to see anything. And I certainly know, you know, know that it's it certainly is difficult. But the the more that we can start to, you know, understand what we're seeing, the better it's going to be for our drawing, the better it's going to be for your painting, you name it. Um, so... Uh, we're not I, but these outside contours of the face and there's a cast shadow and there's the contour of the face so this is the outside edge and again we don't want to get distracted by that we want to oh yeah this is the outside contour okay fair enough um, versus uh, there's a cast shadow over here so there's a cast shadow that comes so we have the hair on this side that we haven't done yet um, so we have this hair that comes up a little bit and this is actually again with it's growing you know again this is you know growing from the hair here from the head and this is also growing you know this is coming up and off and going across or what have you uh, and again we have to be careful that we're not thinking of that we don't get you know distracted by individual strands but then you have the hair that, that is coming up and it's going, you know, down here and then this comes and falls down through here. And then we've got where this, this, uh, again, this hair is, is touching there and then it's coming off the face like so, right? And then we've got, um, again, if I, it's very, very dark back there. It's hard to see exactly what's going on, but it seems like there's some hair that's again coming off the face. Um, so we're going to bring some of this hair coming off, off, off the head and coming in front of that ear a little bit. And we've got, you know, again, we've got some, and this is, this is back here. This is way in shadow. Okay. But that's in front of the ear. So it's also underneath the ear right here, which again, this is our ear. When, and the ear has, is, is deep in shadow. But, be, but behind the ear, there's more hair. And this hair is very, 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 very dark. Okay. So again, we can get, we're not going to get a ton into that. but And we can see a little bit more what's happening here because of, you know, again, there's a, a part that comes down off of here. And then again, where this 
starts to open up sort of an S curve through there and then this comes out here and then this so there, this is like it's, it gets darker because you're seeing she's wearing a dark shirt and then that little bit is actually skin uh, no it's not skin that can be because this had a collar I can't remember but there's something back there uh, that's giving a little bit of light um, the other the, the thing is, is we're gonna ask ourselves you know, how much information we're putting in well we're not putting in much information so instead of going oh there's one two three values there we're just gonna do the two values this is darker this is a little lighter this then has a little bit of this family coming up and then it sort of disappears she actually has some earrings here that we're not going to put in there um, they're pretty long dangly sorts of things with these little triangles or whatever they were we're not going to put that in but we're going to go okay this family again is, is coming out into light not that it's super light but it is lighter than behind it because there's more hair behind it but this hair is in shadow so again we're thinking of the basic volumes of the hair we're thinking of oh this group is behind this this group is in front of this this group is coming out while this group is going back so there's another she's got very very layered sort of hair really really uh wonderful hair as this comes here we have um well that's too much actually this needs to come in here and again this is lighter hair or it's lighter because it's in light when i say that i don't mean it's like you know it's not because of some sort of dye job or something it's the this is catching more light than this behind it, it goes a little darker so and then this over, over here is also a little darker too so again we're, we can start to Start to see a little bit more of the different families again I'm keeping this soft because again we're not doing a, a tight rendering or something like that this is still supposed to be more of a sketch so again this is this is now again this fades into shadow so if I got too much like little lines that look like they in, they, they represent hairs or even groupings of hair we've, we've got to be careful because it's, it's losing information as it goes up into that shadow uh, again, so we're trying to think a little bit about the light and what the how it's affecting the hair, but you know we're again we're not trying to think of little individual hairs. We're trying to think of you know just main. We're trying to think of how the the, the hair itself, the, the larger groups, are twisting and turning and, and things like that. This is lighter. This is going to be going darker as it goes behind. So just stuff like that. Um, again, I don't want this to look like stripes on a shirt. So this is losing information as it goes up into that, into that, um, into that shadow. Like all that individual stuff, you know, all these little subsections of hairs, that's too much information. So they merge because it's losing information. So again, we want to be, you know, dealing with some of this as we're drawing. And I, I guess I kept saying that this wasn't going to be a value drawing, but, uh, and again, it's not. I'm obviously not rendering form and I'm not going to get in here for all the highlights, middle, you know, middle values core shadows, dark tone, reflected light, you know, all that, you know, we're not going to be doing, you know, our cast shadow. Uh, we're not going to be doing all that. Not, not for this. There's times, you know, there is going to be times where we are going to come back in here and do a full on, you know, take this to take and, and, and take it to the, you know, the, the most complete finish that you can but that is not today again this goes darker as it's turning this goes darker this is lighter 
catching light. And so if this is the same as this, and we look over here and it's not, again, we're going to go ahead and darken it. Because again, it's, it's got to be this, this basic relationships. Is, is this lighter or darker than that? Um, and let's see, this fades through there. And then it picks up a little more. Okay, so again, we just wanted the hair dark enough that we can see because again, the hair drapes the face uh, and it really sets the mood, the tone, you you name, you know, whatever verb you want to use to describe it, it really becomes important. And again, we have a little bit of of this uh, that's again, a, a, the, this is the far hair versus the front hair. Uh, and so this is kind of, there's a little bit of, of shadow coming from here and to push this back. Uh, not only that, but if something is behind it, it has less contrast. So this should be a little lighter, whereas this right here is getting a little darker, just a little bit. That means this pushes forward, that pushes back. So again, just some little stuff like this to give us a little bit of a feeling that this is hair. And again, so we're doing, we're, we're, we're thinking of it like a sculptor. We're not, we're not thinking of it as individuals. And then if we wanted to, if you were doing like photorealism, well, then you start breaking it out into smaller groupings and smaller groupings and smaller groupings uh, until you might do some individual hairs at the very end, but not at the beginning. And even though there are some artists that may, that, that may work that way, the vast majority of professional artists don't do it because it is a mistake to work that way. Now, some people's brains, again, they can work that way and that's fine. But 90% of your artists out there that are professionals don't do it that way because it will lead you down roads where you will get yourself into trouble. And rather than, you know, go four wheeling without a, a winch or something, you know, in case you get in trouble, you know, a, you know, a system where you can pull yourself out of a bog or something. Uh, you may want to double think, you know, think about whether you're going to go four wheeling if you're not prepared. And that's the same sort of thing. People have made mistakes, gotten bogged down and then say, why would I do that again? This works. It works mo most effectively. Uh, and so don't discount it. It's like, oh, I think I know more. I think I'll know better. I, I, uh, trust me, it's start off this way. And by the way, even though those people that, that work that way, they didn't just magically start that way. They started this way and then they, they work to do it, you know, to do it where they're skipping past it. But most people can't. Most professional artists can't. They would do it exactly how I'm showing you. So now there's a cast shadow on here. This cast shadow is very important because it really wraps this face and shows off the uh, the structures of the head and so you've got this is this is where the cast shadow meets the meets the light okay so this all this right here is cast shadow now if it's cast shadow it's going to have to have some darkness to it, right? Now with the hair, since the hair that I've done here is not, you know, actual, actual value for right now, we'll probably make this cast shadow a little, a little darker than the hair to show that it actually is a shadow. Um, so, but the, the, the reason I point this out is because sometimes people will think if you don't do it right, this will start to look like you've cut the head off, you know, you've scooped out, uh, you know, this is the edge, but it's not the edge. This back here is the edge. Uh, and I've, I've, so we need to uh, make sure we've got some of that. So for right now, we've got, we, I wanted to make this where this uh, touches that. A little bit of gradation, but it's so dark I've lost this back here, this edge. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to pull that out. Now, right now, that looks like something made out of chrome, 
uh, because it's just too bright. It's too light. That's that's too much. And so, but I, I lightened it because I'm going to come back in here first, and I'm not going to blow it all the way out. But then I'm going to get this guy right here. Now this is what's called a a Conte. It's a uh, Pierre Noir 1710 series. Uh, if you've seen them off, uh, Proco uses them. Jeff Watts uses them. They're very nice. They're actually, when I was in, in college, we used a lot of Conte crayon. And this is essentially Conte crayon, but in a pencil, which is amazing. And Conte is really nice because it make, can make really, really sharp edges. Uh, and it's, it's a type of charcoal. It's basically charcoal that's been fired in a kiln once it's made. Uh, and so there's like a clay or a, a dark binder that, that is, you know, sort of like a clay or silicate base that is then fired in the kiln. And so because of that, you get these rich darks with it that you can't get with even with the, with charcoal because charcoal starts to rub off, especially on, it doesn't adhere the same way that this does. This, this really attaches itself and stays even more so than charcoal, which, and it's a type of charcoal. Again, I want you to think that it's not charcoal. It's just charcoal made in a slightly different way uh, and it, it's a really quite a superior product. I, I, I love this stuff and again a lot of it's probably because of the fact that we used so much charcoal when I was in school uh, in our in our classes. When we drew people and stuff like that we used a lot of Conte crayon. Um, so anyways we got the little cast shadow on there. The, re what I, the reason I'm playing with this is I just want to make sure that this still reads as that edge. We can still see the edge versus the shadow. Now I've bumped this quite a bit. So for those that are very astute going, hey, wait a minute, you made that darker than what it actually is. We've changed a little bit the, some of these relationships. Uh, again, because we're not, I'm not here to, to render this, even though I'm trying to bring some of this around. Because right now it just seemed like that was too light compared to the, what was the rest back here. But what we came here to do is really to uh, finish out some of the drawing of the features. Uh, again, let's make sure that we have this ear described. Uh, have a little bit of where this comes across the ear. You know, have a little bit of where this back here is also coming across the ear, and there's a slight space. As again, these families of hair, you know, underneath there and stuff. You know, just a little bit more information so that this looks like this is really going back in the shadow. Like so. And again, this has a, a little bit more of a graphic quality. I'm not going to worry quite so much about it. Um, so again, of the... For, for the nose, we've got, you know, again, we've got the wings of the nose. Now most of this nose is again has been that kind of wandered outside there. That's kind of weird. Um, so grab this. So we've got again the uh, this right here, which is again the the wing of the nose. We have the ball of the nose in there. Most of the ball of the nose is 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 with tone. It's it, it's described with the soft tone. Now, and again, I did use some tone because of the fact that this is just so soft. What's what's happening here is just so subtle. Uh, but we have again the 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 wing of the nose. We have the ball of the nose. We have the septum of the nose. Uh, and this, again, the septum is, is is very important as well. Uh, to the nose, we have the you know the ball coming down here, and it's turning right about through there. You know we get some of this, and again a lot of this is is tone. But we've got this, and we've got the we got the nostrils here. Um, we've got the nostril over here, right? It's coming down here. Now there's a cast shadow from the nostril through here and through there 
and it's 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 so dark and part of this could be the photograph usually if you're looking at a model uh, your eyes can perceive much more than any than uh, any camera and so you wouldn't be as as tricked by this but again the photograph will start to look like they merge and they don't uh, like that dark is the same coming down as it wraps around and through a little bit of this uh, the wing right through there and it looks like they're the same the same value they are not so you know don't be don't be fooled it's got to be a little lighter as this wraps around than the actual darkness in the nostril or it won't look right okay um, so we have this nostril here we then have again the wing of the nose here right um, Okay. Now, some people will bring the wing all the way up to the ball, but it doesn't. It actually stops at the base of the cone. That's because at the end of the nose has the ball, and then you have the base. It's actually a cone, so it has a rounded, you know, a rounded uh, top, and then a rounded base. And so, through the base is is where is where the uh, wing attaches to the face, and then the base is going to come back up here again to to come down up onto the ball. So this right that comes through here and this that comes through here, this is the base of, of the uh, cone. Again, the cone is this is the base of the cone through here. This is the top of rounded cone that we call the ball of the nose. And so this up through here is then again the ball of the nose. And so we, we want to make sure that we have some of that information in order for this to look right. Okay, um, that's a little bit of a highlight that happens through there. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be shadow. This is supposed to be slightly in light. Right now they look the same. They can't be. This is darker. This is a little bit lighter. So, and again, a lot of that is subtle tone. Uh, if I were to translate it into, into um, line, we then have, okay, this is the, you know, that's that's the base. Whoops, it doesn't come over enough. This is the base of the cone right through here. This thing comes up through there. You know, so we can turn these into line. You got to be careful if you're not with something really tonal because you have to you can really know what you're doing. That thing comes up here. And then we have the ball of the nose and the ball of the nose is right through here. Okay, they're not, you know, this comes up onto the ball right up through here so and again if I was gonna be doing this maybe we'd lighten this up so this isn't the same everywhere so we could go ahead and, and if this was graphite we would use this if it was charcoal well charcoal again doesn't we don't want to smear graphite if we don't have to uh, and so we can just go ahead and maybe blow this out a little bit um, as far as that goes like that so okay now we've got the we got the nose in there we're gonna come over here for the mouth so let's go ahead and, and draw this mouth and we've got this mouth coming down here now remember with the mouth we got the top that has the three parts we've got this long muscle that starts here and comes down so we've got this through here that's coming up and like that and then we have you know this coming the the V down through here, and then we've got and she's got actually quite a, a distinct V through 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 her uh, the top lip, uh, which isn't always the case. Um, and so that's she's got a very distinct you know cleft or V in that top of her mouth, and then again we're going to go ahead. This comes down through here. This comes down through here. Now, if we want to, this actually should round a little bit more, probably through right through there, just a touch. It seems a little straight. This is nice and round, and this seems way too straight. So we're gonna go ahead and round that a bit, and then we're gonna. Looks like this got. This is not the same distance. We go from here to here, from there to there.
pretty close. I just think that I've, I've, we've, um, Okay. All right, so this thing comes through here. This will then go up like so. Up through there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this line is terrible. I'm going to come back, clean that up. All okay. right. So I went ahead and I just erased. So I just went ahead and I erased that, the line I modified it just, you know, like the furthest part off was maybe three sixteenths of an inch. No, it's actually probably an eighth, but just that little change makes quite a bit of difference. So, In terms of the uh, the, we've got the mouth that's open just a little bit. Remember, we've got three muscles. We've got a muscle group that comes here, a middle bundle, and a muscle group that comes down here. So this and and hers, again, it's soft, but we can see that this is again this overlaps because this muscle group is in front, and this is for those that have again gotten the instruction or who've been on the blog or what have you, we'll talk about the three soft U's, uh, but this will overlap just a scotch and so will this as this comes up. Now I could, if we want to do it with contour line, this would be a lighter uh, bit of the contour. This would be darker where, so, um, cause remember that form lines, uh, for those that are in the class, when we've drawn the apple, there's the shoulder that goes up and over and down into where the the funnel where the stem grows from and that shoulder line it's 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 a rhythm but it's lighter than the outside contour so if we're doing that you know then this would be darker this would be lighter as it comes up and overlaps a little bit um and then this would come from over here so again that we've got now we've got the lip there now we're not going to get into this a ton but and we're certainly not going to get into the the teeth all that much but you know she she does have you know some teeth showing and you just want to lightly if you make teeth too dark those lines it's gonna look like she's got cavities in between her teeth so you got to be really 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 careful of uh like that one's too close that one should be over here uh and the line's just a bit dark but i think we can get uh lighten it and and not be a big deal Okay, so now we're not going to get a big, a big deal. Uh, it's not going to be a big deal, but if we look at those teeth, they're even, you know, they're just as dark and sometimes they look a little darker than, than the sclera because again, they're, they're pushed back in the shadow. They're behind the lips. So if you make those teeth too light, like right now, these teeth are too light. I'd want to put a little bit of value just to push them back so that they don't, if you don't, they start to jump out of the mouth and it's a very jarring sort of a look. Uh, there was an old comedy from uh, where someone went and whitened their teeth too much and they smiled and it looked like the person's teeth were iridescing or had their own light source. It was very bizarre uh, and we don't want that look. Again, this is going to come down here. This is the 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 muscles as they as the, so there's you know the muscles this comes together and and then there's because of that there's this musculature causes a little you know a little hill that's again in shadow and then you have this little bit where this thing comes up a little bit into light But you know this is this is a tonal thing. But again, if I if I'm do if I'm you know if I was going to be putting value on this, I'd certainly want to be aware of some of that. I'd want to be looking for that in order for this to to look 
correct, uh, as you might say. I don't know why you would say it like that, but, um, <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> we've got that going in there. Then we've also got this. Now, again, this is going to be touching the teeth. You're going to see some of the teeth back here going into deep shadow. Uh, this will be going to deep. So, again, this line. Now, you know, we, we're going to, it's going to need to have some darkness. Now, it's, if we were doing just contour, I'd make the line darker here as it goes showing those teeth into deep shadow. So the contour line would get darker as it comes back here and then get lighter as it comes up and over because that means it's rounding out into the light a little bit. And we want some of that look. Uh, then we're going to do the same thing down here where we've got some of this in the corners, bring this mouth, you know, it's a little darker and then it goes in the light so it gets a little lighter. And then same thing here, this comes over here. Um, this comes over here. And, and this part of the mouth comes, gets a little darker and then it gets lighter as it comes around. <clears throat> and then as this juts back, this creates a real dark shadow below her lip. And we want, again, we want to make sure we've got some of that happening. And if we were going to put value on the mouth, now again, we're not going to get into it, you know, we're certainly not going to get into putting a whole bunch of value on this mouth. Uh, and she's got a little bit smaller. She's got a full mouth this way, but she's got a smaller mouth width wise. And, you know, we want to, again, give a nod to that. Um, again, we've got this muscle. Now it's in shadow over here, but it's, it's still there. So this muscle comes up a little bit and it comes down a little bit. And then this is in shadow. And there's just a little bit of where it gets lighter right here. Again, just like it, you know, cause this is puckered and pinched. And then this starts to come away from that pinch and it catches just a tiniest bit of light. So, again, very important. This right here is very light, very gentle. Uh, you gotta be careful that we don't bend it up too much. It'll start to look like she's smiling. This little corner, if it goes up too much, it'll start to look like the muscles are pulling it into a smile. And what it's actually doing is it's it's almost tensing, not into a frown, but it's got a little tension through here, the muscles, and it pulls the muscles, they go a little darker. So you gotta make sure that, again, this little up here does not get too light. Um, we're not gonna, again, we're not gonna worry a ton about, you know, if we're gonna get into value, we could really get into this and we go, well, let's see, the, the bridge gets darker here, then if this is the side going down, it gets lighter there, catching reflected light, and then when it hits the cheek, it goes darker again. Dark, whoops dark, lighter, darker, you know, we could really get into that. But again, that's not why we're here. We also have the this right here is the, again, the, uh, the neck, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, and then we have the chin. So we haven't, now look how the chin, it wraps. So there's, you know, the chin is, is wrapping around this two cylinder as well. So there's the little front of the chin and then there's the sides. That's why this is darker and this is a little lighter on each side. Um, so, and again, this, this wraps up just almost over here where, where we've got the, again, the, the side of this, of this mouth. Um, so this almost comes from about to right here. So again, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and put on, give her the chin, this nice little chin that she's got almost a, a sweetheart chin, I think is what people used to call that back in the day. But she's very, very round chin through there. And then from there we've got, again, this, this part of the jawline. Um, there's a little bit, we, again, we're not dealing with value, but this little tuck up here, 
and then that, that gives you this reverse curve that really gives you this menacing, it gives you a more menacing feel to that mouth. And, and, and over here, it's darker, but over here it's in, in light. And again, you have to be really, really careful that you don't make this seem like it's smiling. I know I've said that several times, uh, but just a little, little subtlety like that can change the mouth. Um, the, the, the mouth, the, the, the way the mouth reads, as people would say, that mouth really reads. Um, they might say, well, I didn't think the mouth was literate at all. Um, but, again, we can go ahead and do that. You know, sort of, there's also a highlight up here because this isn't flat. Um, this has the top, the top is a little bit lighter because this would be catching light. This is then turning, getting a little darker. So there is some of that going on. Again, we're not going to sit here and detail it, but we're going to give it a nod on this on this drawing. Again, you could do yours just with line drawing, and that would be fine. I'm I'm just doing this because, well, again, I have uh, because this is such a poor drawing. It's uh, it seems like it needs some of this this tone to to give it you know some punch if you will. Uh, this is the flatter lip. It should be darker than this lip. Uh, now it's much darker in the photograph, but again, we're just going to give a little bit of a nod that this upper lip is darker than the bottom lip. Okay. So it's going to go darker, getting lighter, and then go darker again because it's round. So it's coming, you know, out of here, then it's starting to get lighter as it comes around. And then it, it goes back again into shadow. Okay. So we've got, again, the, the basics of that mouth is on there. And uh, so we've got the mouth, we've got the nose. The only thing we've got left, uh, there's, so this overlaps. This is the, where I was trying, I was talking and I, I got a little, uh, I got off topic when we started, I talked a little bit about the, the sweetheart chin, uh, where again you got this this very definite, you know, chin coming up and through there, and then you get now you got to be careful with this because it's it's very soft. If you're not careful with this, it'll look like she's got a double chin or that she's aging and her face muscles are falling. So you got to be really careful with this. It's going to create just a very soft, very subtle. It's more of an overlap, so this this comes down. It's nice and round, and this overlaps that. If you at all go ba bump ba bump and too much, again, it's going to look like she's got a double chin, and that's not what she has. She has this chin that's very prominent, very round. Again, what, what some people might term, uh, you know, a sweetheart sort of a chin, and and we want some of that. We want some of that on there. Uh, as far as that goes. And again, you have to be really careful as you're drawing this to not make it seem like perhaps they have a double chin, but it's just a very soft sort of this, again, the sweetheart chin. And I had to soften it. Mine, there was a couple places like right here where it looked like she had, again, a very, you know, a lot of, you know, like almost like more weight through her jowl. And that's not what it is. It's just the fact that, again, the fact that she has that sweetheart chin. Um, there's a lot of value going really, really dark because it's not in light, the lips are. And so the, the lips are not the darkest, it's actually this little shadow underneath the lips and that helps project the lip to make it feel like it has again volume we keep talking about volume volume again if i was doing lots of if i was trying to render this there's a lot of there's a core shadow and reflected light again long hair uh this gets darker as it begins to turn around the uh you know the jawline there um this also shows the there's a little bit a little bit of a a cast shadow, but it's also the underside of the chin that is, you know, this is going to follow along underneath here, thereabouts. 
Okay, and then this, and this is again, that's the other side of the chin, and then we start to get the cast shadow, this coming around part of the gullet, and this part of the cast shadow coming around here, and so again, this would be cast shadow, so this would be darker, and this would be darker, and all this good stuff. But this light can't be as light as anything up here because it's further back. Look at that light. So this right here in light is as dark almost as it's going back against into this shadow right there. That's the same value as that right there. So again, we have to, if we were doing, again, a value study where we're really trying to get those nuances, we, we need that relationship. So I'd probably put a tone over this to push this back even more. So again, that neck goes back. If, it, if we don't do that, the neck will start to try to jump forward um, as far as that goes. So really the last thing we're going to do on this, because again, we could play on this for, you know, another five hours or even another 10 hours to really, you know, try to try to render this out. And I'm not going to, you know, people will do that where they do, um, you know, the, uh, the quick stuff and, and they speed it up and, but um, and we don't, I think there's enough here that you've seen enough to kind of understand where we're going, how we're playing the game, as some people might say, uh, as far as this goes. So again, we've got on her eyebrow. And again, sometimes we have to do a little bit of a, which is what I did. We took her to the, we took her into the salon and we're redesigning the eyebrow. And there's times we want to do that. I've been talking about, you know, we don't want it too, too much of a curve to it, or she looks sinister. If it arcs too much, it starts to look like again the, you know, the evil stepmother out of a uh, out of some film, some animated film or something like that. And we don't want that. We don't want it to look like, uh, you know, we're we're starting to question her sincerity or something. Um, so again, we've taken some of that curve out of the eyebrow some of that curve that arc flattened it out just a bit and that's that's a a choice now as long as we're doing that for a choice well that's a good thing if you're doing it because you don't know what you're doing well that may not be a good thing but the idea is that as you draw more and more and more you're going to start to make changes based on what it would do if you didn't change it so in other words you know if i if i don't do this the eyebrows still look sinister if i don't uh, change the mouth. It'll look like she's smiling. If I don't do, you know, you're going to start, uh, I had an instructor that used to call it taking care of business. In other words, making sure what the actual idea is comes through. And this is that this person is not supposed to be smiling, that there's sort of a, perhaps a foreboding, uh, a, uh, you know, that they're a little noivous about something. And, you know, that's what we're, that's what we want this to, to, to read like in our, you know, in our drawing. And I think we're, barely, we're we're just, you know, starting to get some of that idea uh, going on in here. And again, now we can go ahead and we've got this eye here. Uh, we've got the thickness of the lid of the eye through there. Okay, we've got the tear duct, we've got the, the lid of the eye over here, <clears throat> pardon me, so we've got this coming down through here, and again, this is fairly soft, that through there, we're seeing a little bit of, there's a ridge of the, um, of the inside of the ocular cavity where it starts to go into the uh, where it, go, it goes starts to fall into it and then it really dips down so it kind of slight dip and then it really dips and that's what this ridge line is that we're catching here again it's it's a landmark of the skull so again the reason that we draw the skull is to help us when we see something like that go what is that oh that's part of that ocular cavity that that second little dip that really goes down into the eye where the eyeball sits and they're like okay yeah now i see it that's the whole point for doing some of that, you know, understanding the skull is it will help you draw things like eyes much better. So again, we've got this coming down through here. 
is coming down through there. All right. Um, and again, I think we've got you start studying eyebrows. They actually have quite a bit of character to them. They, they come in, they get thicker, they get thinner, they come out, they they do some just some some crazy stuff sometimes, and uh, they're 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 very expressive. They're, you know. And I mean, some people might go, oh, well, of course they're expressive, but they're not just the same, you know, thickness all the way around. This is getting a little, uh, this and this, these two lines here are not following one another. They're not symmetrical because this eye is getting a little thicker. Eyebrow is getting a little thicker as it comes down, but it's actually coming in before it, then it gets a little thicker coming over here. It's, it, it's a, it's a, it's turning, it's, it's switching, it's, it's coming back and forth. Uh, and it's, it's what makes it interesting. There's just so much interesting stuff going on with the face. It, it really is. So we'll go ahead. This is all in shadow. This is supposed to have some of the the, the light on there. Is too light on the sclera. We then have now this is in shadow, but we're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of the fact that you know there's not going to be a distinct cast shadow line. But we're going to make it a little darker as it goes up because it's turning, you know, going up into shadow away from us. This then is, is there. This is our tear duct here. Tear duct can be very, very dark. Again, most of the tear duct, a lot of times that we see is that there's sort of a, a, a little, now this, or this is going to pull it out too bright, but there's some reflected light on that tear duct. That was too much. And that's really the, uh, the only thing that we can really see on the tear duct because it's, it's, it's dark. It's a dark red. It's fairly dark. And it's just it's just because it's wet that it picks up some light that makes it so we can see it. Okay, so again, we've got this going over here. Again, this is getting darker as it comes up, so we're going to uh, make this lighter as it comes down uh, as far as that goes. Right, there's a little bit of a highlight in that eye, so we're going to look for that. A little bit of that highlight, like so. We're then going to go ahead, and this gets a little darker, gets darker as it comes up, gets lighter as it comes down. We have the, that there is the pupil back in here. So we're going to put that in uh, as far as that goes. Again, this is going to get a little darker here in the corner, get a little lighter as it comes out on the bottom. This gets a little lighter as, whoops, as that comes up there and goes up there. This is going to be getting a little darker because we're going to see just a tiny bit of the thickness of that lower lid coming up and around the eye just a bit should have a little bit more of that. It should be a little bit thicker. That seems a little too paper thin. So we're going to go ahead and give just a little bit more. Well, that blew that out, didn't it? Blew that out. Now we're going to redraw it. Okay, so we're going to come back in there. Push that back down. Bring this a little bit. Extend that just a little bit. Okay. And again, we've got the pupil up here. Getting lost into the dark. This getting darker up here. This getting darker down here. This really dark through there. And again, we're not rendering this, but this is just enough so that this is getting darker as it comes over. This is getting darker as it comes up. Like so. There's a little bit. Um, we can, to make it seem like it's the same as this eye over here, that's got just a little bit of that highlight on the sclera. We're going to knock that back a little bit. 
we're going to do just a little nod to that over here. Okay, where we're going to put just a little bit of uh, try the right hand. I guess some people use it. Why don't I see if it works? Um, not as well as the left, but we can tolerate it. Uh, so, anyways, go ahead and put a little bit of that, you know, highlight across the sclera in there. That's jumping a little too much because it's just a, just a scotch much. Um, now this is pretty smeary and soft and, and that sort of thing. Uh, there's different, so again, most a lot of times people do charcoal on on a newsprint. It's really easy to make a really nice, uh, it, it's easier to grandstand with charcoal. Again, most times with charcoal we use uh, something with a little bit more um, tooth, as you say. Uh, and even the smoothest newsprint has more tooth than this by far. Uh, and so again, and with, with charcoal, usually you'll use papers with some sort of tooth. Uh, the more tooth it has, the better it has and all this sort of stuff. Um, but we've got pretty much the basic idea of this, the, the features on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Right here, this comes over here. This is going to be coming around a little more through there. And then we're going to have a little bit of the, uh, the eye. No, I don't, I, this has got to get in the fold. It's a little darker through there. There's a little bit of this getting a little bit lighter through there. Uh, and then this follows down through there. Uh, this goes a little bit darker here. And then this comes into there. And this gets darker through there. So there's some basic value relationships I wanted to make sure we've got in order for this to look right. This, this goes a little bit darker through here. And again, this is that, that, um, that Conte. Again, if I was doing this normally, you'd never do it with your finger. So I'm doing some terrible stuff and I'm letting you know about it because again, if this was like a nice drawing, I would never have just touched it with my finger like that. Since I'm like, oh, this is just a sketch, whatever. Uh, I'm I, I did it obviously, but I, I just want you to know that, that that would not be a good idea uh, if I was gonna, you know, put this in a gallery or, or enter it in a competition. It, it's just gonna look more dirty. It's gonna not look as clean. It, it's, just, it's just not a good idea. Um, take that, you know, however you like, but with charcoal, there's a lot you can do with charcoal, but if you start using your fingers, your your oils will get into the paper. And once you get oil in there, it's never coming out. And once the charcoal hits that oil, it looks different than it, it will anywhere else. And so it's it's really just it, it's um, don't do it. Uh, again, if, if you're doing a, if you're doing a quick sketch, again you might say uh, this is uh, we're going on an hour and a half too hard. How can you call that a quick sketch? Well, the, to this to me is still a quick sketch. Three hours is still a quick sketch. Uh, something like, you know, seven hours, ten hours. Now we're talking a drawing uh, where you're actually putting, you know, much more time into that, uh, into what you're doing. So, again, we've got, you've got this where this is just starting to, to read. I kind of wiped that over with a cloth so it blew out some of the, it blew out some of the eye. So we might have to come back into the eye. But for the most part, we're going to come over here and we're going to put the lashes on. Again, on on this uh, on this gal, and again, there's a part where this is coming out and wrapping around, and from the edge of that, that's where we get the lashes happening. So again, we're just gonna, so again, we're putting some lashes on her. We're just going to push out just a few lashes, and uh, we got to be careful that we don't. You know, if, if, if they start to look just like individual strands, again, it's, it's not going to look right. It's, it's going to look like, uh, well, like fake lashes. So we don't want that. So again, we're going to go ahead and bring some lashes through there. Just a little bit. Lashes through there. Again, I think we'll go ahead and just maybe bring a little more length. Uh, the ends of the lashes are normally a little longer like these are, are turning up and we're, we're just losing them just a little bit. So it, it was looking like, uh, now this side had lashes and this side didn't. 
um, as far as that goes. Now I think these got a little bit long over here still, so I got, you know, I've got to, I've got to be careful that. Oh, that's the texture. I was like, that looks like bad lashes through there. What happened? Um, but it was just the texture, so <laughs> you gotta be careful of that. Um, again, if I was gonna, you know, play with this and render it out. Again, on the bottom, we can have some bo a little bit of the bottom lashes coming. But again, we got to be careful that we don't um, make those too dark, you know, or they're going to start to feel like, uh, again, like it's 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 a bad, uh, you know, just it, it's trying to be like a commercial or something or a advertisement for for lashes or an illustration or something like that. Um, I think we have just enough information, and we can call this good. So we went ahead and now. I just realized that we don't have there's a little bit of this bottom lead coming around here. I didn't have any of that, so I want some of that. Now again, this is this is in shadow, so right now it looks it looks a little on the light side. So we got to be careful that again, it's not looking too light. Uh, otherwise, it won't look like it's in shadow. So again, there's there's all these little, you know. Oh, I just said I would. I already said we weren't gonna we weren't gonna, you know, uh, get in rid of this. And here I am talking about stuff like that that has to do with rendering, but. Uh, I'm just going to put just enough so it looks like we're again we're just doing a a hint that there are shadows on here, but but even when we're doing this we're still trying to keep in mind, hey how light is this versus that and how light is that versus that and and so forth and so on. Uh, because we still want it to to look like uh, we care about it. Again, this is you know up here this is on the cheekbone it's it's catching light on that on that cheekbone. Uh, so we can maybe lighten that up just a little bit uh, through there. Um, this could, uh, you know, as we go through here, this is supposed to be darker over there, a little lighter through here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my, I may just had some fall off the table, but no big deal. Um, we're going to go ahead and lighten this just a bit. So we're going to go ahead and bounce my eraser through here just to scotch. Um, we may have to, uh, well not ha we may, not that we may, we will have to come back in because again if you're not careful this will look like you know scarring from you know acne as a, ch as a teenager or something. Uh, we, again we don't want that look so we got to be careful of that but we could come in here a little bit to may say, hey, these are supposed to be light tones, these are supposed to be middle values. And we could just give it, again, a little bit more of an indication of form. Uh, we haven't, again, we haven't, if I was going to really do this right, well, then we, or not right, but if I was going to put more time, take it to a more finished state, again, I'd be, for the next five hours, what I'd be doing is, you know, checking, you know, little things like is how dark is that versus that, how dark is that versus that, how dark is that versus that versus that, you know, that's, that's really where it would, you know, all, all that, that's where I'd be spending, you know, my time on this would be, you know, just the little places, the little relationships that are going to really give this, um, you know, make, make this feel like it's, it's, it's again, it's, it's, it's got a light source. Um, and, and that, you know, we, we'd want some of that, right? Certainly. Uh, so again, I might, you know, we could say, well, you know, is this light enough? There's catching a little bit of highlight coming coming down through here, and you know, all this all this good stuff. Um, and that's where that's where rendering is would come in. Oh, this is this needs to look dark enough, be dark enough so that looks like a highlight. Well, then we come in here and we darken it down just a little bit, uh, just to just to, just to scotch, and then we come in here because that's a little too dark, and then we, you know, try to you could use a stomp, you could use this. Uh, to again get in there and 
and try to, to darken that. This went a little bit too, looks like I got some, some charcoal in on that. Um, that's still a little bit too dark, so we come over here and maybe blot that a bit. Um, so lighten that up. You know, I mean, this is this is where the the the, the rubber meets the road. It was the you know was an old saying. You know, this is where we'd really spend most of our time. I think this actually got pushed in just a little bit. Uh, this needs to probably come out this way just a little bit more. Uh, so again, this that's that's where you you take your time where. What is this against that, against that, against this? And you, you'd start to make your decisions. Like again, yeah, I think I think I, I bit in with that highlight and I, I don't think that's right. I think the highlight can start further out to here. You know, again, that's that's where, you know, because it looks like it was coming in too far. And again, that's that's where the rendering really would come, come into play. You know, you get into the hair and all these little places and all these little finite relationships. But the, the basic thing for the portrait, let's step back to the, the portrait. Uh, the way we started this was we first did the initial measuring. We said, well, the cheekbones to the chin to the top of, of this head was basically, it was a 1 to 1.5 thereabouts. And so we said that was 1 to, you know, one you know, about 1.5. So we took this and we said, okay, that should be, you know, that there. Should then be a one, you know, to, to 1.5. I've already said that several times. We then said, well, it's. And uh, we then said, okay, let's try to guess me where the skull is. Uh, I think the 1.5 actually hit through here. I think is what we start out with. Uh, so then we marked that there. We then tried to put the hairline in. Once we had the hairline, we then okay, let's go ahead and check for the thirds, chin to nose. Nose to brow, brow to, to the hairline. And we said, all right, well, this one right here is a little longer, right? It would also be valued to help uh, to help the bottom of this nose because this is a little, one of those areas that, you know, just is a little, a little wonky. So we had that in the brow, which is up here, is, you know, it's this is the shortest, this is a little longer, this is the longest of all. Uh, once we did that, we then said, okay, let's see where the eye line was. And the eye, the eye line through the tear duct was just above the halfway point. So we went ahead and, and put the eyes in just above the halfway point. We then said, okay, well, we can't see the entire face. So let's look for the, uh, the size of the ocular cavity. And so um, we went ahead and defined those came in a little bit and divine find the, the 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 three eye spaces and the eye spaces should be equal so we did that and then we said let's take this eye and we started measuring this up and we found that wait a minute it wasn't conforming to the eye, eye and that's because the eye had been made too large and so we had to shrink the eye down um i'm looking at this eye here a little bit and i think that got a little bit of let's see where's my there we go, that'll work. Um, there we go. Um, that'll work, there we go. It just looked a little too flat, like you couldn't have an eye back there, it wasn't. So we need to, you know, make it a little bit more convex uh, so that there could be an eyeball back here. Now understand that this right here is not, of course, the edge of the eye, the eyeball, the the edge of the the iris is you know inside because she's looking so far to the right and left. Now, as an artist, you'd have to ask yourself, well, is that what I want, and is that too much, and you know, should I move it over or something like that, and and that could certainly be something that we do. But anyway, so anyways, we were, we were measuring with the eye, and the, we found out, wait, it's all out of whack. But then I realized, well, it's no, it's not this. What the eye space was too large, and so it threw everything out of whack. So we shrunk down the eye, and then after we shrunk down the eye, it, it, it corrected the problem. All of a sudden, it, it settled back into the, our proportions. So it's, it's really important to understand that if anything gets off, it has just a, a cascading effect on the rest of the drawing. We want to be very you know, careful that you know, we don't get uh, anything off, because if we do, it's going to really change 
the way the drawing looks. Now I'm, I'm playing with this a little bit because it still doesn't quite work. Again, that would be part of this things that I try to do in that sort of that five hour sort of thing uh, where we go, hey, we need to make this really, really work and really sing and all that good stuff. Um, so again, then, so we got those, we said, all right, we got the eye spaces corrected. We then already had, you know, we'd already, I forgot to say that we put down the nose and we found that the nose was much higher and the lips was much higher. And we got, you know, the top of the lip was, you know, where, you know, got that marked and the bottom of the lip and the chin and, and we started to rough it out. We begin to rough out the basic, you know, the basic shape of the head and all that good stuff. And so, you know, we went ahead and got to here and, and, uh, you know, we went ahead and from the, uh, you know, from there, we just kept, uh, you know, we started to put in the basic shapes, the basic landmarks, uh, we, and then double checked to make sure that there was no, uh, you know, serious things happening. Uh, once we, we got past that point, we put a little bit of the value on there took a break and that was the major change that i came in here and took about an hour or two hours to kind of it's still kind of rough again it looks it looks smoother on the on uh, on the camera but if you're here in real life this is still you can see a whole lot of you know of, of, of the uh charcoal skipping over the paper because charcoal is very soft it skips over any texture very 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 simply uh but there's not enough texture for it to build up and so that's why this is is looking very very um, and so I had to build it up over an hour and a half, putting stuff down, rubbing it in, putting stuff down, rubbing it in, putting stuff down, rubbing it in. And, and that's where we came back. And then we basically just defined and talked a little bit about hair, defined the features, uh, played with the mouth a little bit. And, uh, and now we've got a finished head. For you that are in the class, um, I want you to go ahead and you can, I'm, I'll send you this, but again, I've, I've said several times, this is not great reference. And it's probably going to be harder than if you chose your own. So you can certainly choose reference that you'd rather do than the reference that, I, that, that I've been working from. Uh, if you want to try this, that's fine, but you're going to have to probably put some tone in there uh, and some of these other things just to make this thing work, uh, it, it, you know, as far as that goes. Um, so it's up to you. But I want you guys to do a, a portrait using the concepts of both the egg shape and the skull Get someone that you're that that you know, but remember all how many how long we were actually doing all these different measuring. You know, again, we always usually when we, especially when we start portraits, we want to oh let's jump into the eyes. I think I can do the eyes, and we do, we forget about the underlying structure. We forget about the underlying proportion. We spent literally almost seventy percent of this drawing playing with getting the the proportions right checking the proportions because if the proportions aren't right it's all going to be wrong so we we did quite a bit of that and and that happens whenever we we draw something we always want to be looking for getting th those basic relationships if we don't have the basic relationships good luck uh it's not gonna it's gonna not gonna look like it's not gonna look like a person if it's way uh, it won't look like the person we're drawing if it's way off it won't look like a person at all and remember some of the, the, the challenges we had here was we had perspective. We had the person being viewed, the, the, the camera or the viewpoint of the camera was somewhere about here. So that's why we're seeing this a little bit from, you know, underneath. So that's why we're seeing a little bit more of the arc to the eyes. Uh, this is getting shorter as it goes up those spaces. Uh, I don't know if my hand was in the way. It, it's getting shorter as it comes up to the spacing on there. Uh, and it's all because, again, the fact that the, the point of the viewer, the, the, your eyes, if you will, was somewhere, somewhere either probably just below the chin. Um, so the person was above the camera. Or if this was a person, the person would, eye, eye level would be right about here. Uh, so, again, that's why we got this perspective going on. So I'll go ahead and give this a shot. I hope you've enjoyed, uh, again, this is just a basic portrait where we weren't trying to do rendering or any of that stuff not in this one we, we've we've done a little bit of it and I did talk about it I kept saying we're not doing that we're not doing that and we did talk a little bit about it I don't want you to think come on oh come on you were totally trying to no I was I was doing a little bit but but we weren't doing a full-on rendering uh, we are going to do some of those uh, as those that take my classes 
Uh, for those that uh, are just looking at the YouTube videos, uh, we're, uh, I'll do some of them as sort of quick videos, uh, quick time. And then if you, you know, if you like, you can come to the uh, Kevin McCain Studios page or Idaho Art Classes and actually, you know, purchase, uh, you know, the, the video of, of doing some actual rendering and stuff. So use these concepts of proportion, the five eye spaces, the half, half, and a half, which again, we still had to modify because that's just a guide. And then we also did skulls, the skull proportion, which was third, third, and a third. And by combining that along with other meticulous measuring on here, we can get something that starts to feel like this person, starts to look like them. Now, there's still some some stuff that we can, I could do to try to make these look more alike. There's, you know, and that's going to be in the nuancing. Uh, again, there's some things here like, you know, this little bit here is a little bit stronger in the picture than what I drew, you know, right through here. So there's just little bits like that that's going to make it look more like the person, uh, you know, or more like the person, like like this gal I think was in her 30s. This might have been what she looked like when she was 16. But some of it's because of the fact we haven't we haven't got some of the the information in there of, you know, this 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 muscle here, this you know this nuance there, uh, that's going to make it start to feel, you know, more and more like you know like the the port the the the, the photo we've got but we're start, starting to come together here this does look uh pretty close to to what she looks like we just again could you know sort of do little little bits to 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 make it more and more and, and look like her more and more and more um so anyways so this has been kevin mccain with kevin mccain studios and idaho art classes give this a shot um this just shows you the entire process Again, we weren't doing the rendering, but it was trying to show you the entire process of dealing with working out and laying out a portrait. And uh, it's a great concept. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you'll use it. And uh, you yeah, all take care. Bye-bye now.